The Protector Chapter 201 They moved on to the next topic of conversation afterward. The legendary protector of Arudaya, the god of war has arrived in Northampton for so long, yet. We've never met with him. I am deeply ashamed of myself. Eric said helplessly. That's right. We all wanted to meet with him just to have the honor of seeing his face with our own. Eyes. Wallace added. Grover Cook laughed. The god of war even rejected the wealthiest man in Northampton, Winston. Gonzalez's invitation, much less the rest of you. Xander Hoyles let out his laughter as well. Let me tell all of you something unbelievable. I am. Supposed to be the highest ranking officer in the Northampton war zone, but regretfully, even I have. Never seen the god of war in person. He's active around the Northampton's war zone and even. Hosted a military practice. But he disregarded me and directly transferred the first army to do his. Bidding. Grover was astounded. You too? Oh my god. To be honest, to him, I am just an insignificant person. I have to pay my respect to Azure Dragon and. The other kings of war despite their lower rank. They are the strongest military force in Arudaya, after. All. Xander explained. Eric and the others shook their heads in disappointment. I guess there is no hope for us since even. Someone like Mr. Hoyles does not get to meet with him. Xander Hoyles flashed a pensive smile. No, that's not true. There is a chance for you to meet with. Him. There's a ceremony to welcome the new commander-in-chief for the Northampton War Zone. Soon. The God of War will certainly attend the ceremony. There are a few seats open to the public to participate in the ceremony, so all of you can try to seize the opportunity then. Really? That's great. We can finally meet with the God of War. Everyone else could barely contain their excitement. Baldwin grinned. I heard that not only is the God of War a young man in his twenties, but he is also single. Coincidentally, my granddaughter, Yara, is single as well. She can be the perfect match for him. They will be a great couple. Clifford retorted immediately. Is that so? Are you saying that your granddaughter is better than mine? Hey, all of us have granddaughters as well. The others voiced out in displeasure too. Even Xander took part in the heated conversation. I have a granddaughter too. She's in the army. Does. That count as an advantage. Ah, in that case, your granddaughter certainly has the edge over ours. We should have sent our granddaughters to join the army too in the past. Eric suddenly changed the topic of conversation. Let's talk about business now. Levi Group and the Acquired Garrison Group will be changing their name to Morris Group three days later. There's no other way to handle this matter. We'll have to sound out Morris Group's capabilities. Zoe was made aware of the matter regarding Levi's group name change into Morris Group's. I heard Neil Atkinson is Morris's uncle. No wonder he helped us through our crisis. Do you know anything about this? Zoe asked curiously. Levi shook his head. I don't know Morris has an uncle. Levi could barely contain his laughter. These. People are ridiculous. How can Kieran be Morris's uncle when he's clearly seven years younger than Morris? I heard Levi Group will be hosting a name-changing ceremony three days later. Are you going to attend the ceremony to check out the situation? Zoe was busy with her matters of establishing a new company, but she was curious about that event. So she asked Levi to attend the ceremony instead. Sure. I'll check out the event. What Zoe did not know was that Levi would attend the ceremony even without her reminder. He decided to bring Mr. and Mrs. Atkinson too. Levi informed Morris's parents about that matter when he visited them at Bayview Garden Real. Estates Villa. The Protector Chapter 202. Levi told the aged couple he would pick them up in person three days later. 
he saw Chloe the moment he exited the villa's neighborhood. She was there because she was introducing one of the properties there to a customer. I'm getting off work now. Why don't I treat you to a meal if you are free? Chloe offered with a smile. Levi suddenly remembered the promise he made after they were met with the impromptu situation they... Other day. Sure. Let's have a meal, but it's going to be my treat. Levi answered. Levi was chauffeured to the villa earlier, so he did not have a car. He had no other choice but to let. Chloe drive him to the restaurant. They decided to have their meal in a high-end Chinese restaurant, where their patrons can only be those. With the restaurant's membership. I'm sorry, Ms. Macy. All the private rooms are fully booked. We only have open seats left in the hall. The restaurant staff informed Chloe. Chloe looked at Levi immediately to seek his opinion. Fine by me. Levi nodded. They sat at a table close to the window. Chloe was a regular customer, and she was vaguely familiar with Levi's preference too. So she ordered. A few dishes that suited Levi's taste. Levi enjoyed the meal to his heart's content. Is that really you, Chloe? Someone exclaimed. Two men dressed in suits stood a few feet away from their table. One of the men was clearly excited to see Chloe. Levi felt that the man looked a little familiar. Oh, I remember him now. He's one of my juniors from high school, William Hanks. William studied finance and graduated from a university in South City. Levi allowed him to enter Levi. Group despite his lack of qualification due to William's status as his junior. William appeared to be in a neutral stance after Levi was met with trouble in the past, but he actually sided with Matthew Green. Chloe did not like William because he was annoying and had been relentless in pursuing her. He firmly believed he deserved Chloe especially now that Levi Group had regained its momentum. Chloe, let me introduce to you. This is the manager of Gatsby Group. Mr. Patterson. We are currently discussing a project that's worth a hundred million. William introduced the chubby man next to him to Chloe. Mr. Patterson looked at Chloe lecherously. At that moment, William noticed Levi. He fell into a daze for some time before he addressed him subconsciously, Mr. Garrison, wait, no. Levi Garrison, you're here too. In William's mind, Levi does not deserve any honorifics now that he had been reduced to someone with a lowly status. That's right. You're able to recognize me. Levi smiled. William Hanks is considered half a traitor. There are still plenty of traitors like him among the current staffs in Levi Group. I have to utilize this name-changing ceremony to reassemble the company's employees. I've regained control of Levi Group. For some time now, but I've yet to remove these rotten people. Ha ha ha, of course. You were so glorious in the past. I even worked as your driver and valet when I first entered the company. William remembered everything that happened in the past vividly. I did not get any promotion while you were in charge of the company, Levi Garrison. You've never treated me like your junior always asking me to do those hard and dirty chores. I was promoted and given important tasks to handle after you left, and can finally put my talents to good use. I am now the Vice Director of the Marketing Department. He pointed at Levi and continued, Regretfully, you are no longer my boss. You are just someone who, at most, qualifies to clean my shoes. Levi and Chloe exchanged glances. Both of them snickered. Levi scoffed. Sorry to disappoint you, but I am still your boss. The Protector Chapter 203 William was stunned upon hearing what Levi said. He regained his senses and sneered. Are you trying to crack some joke, Levi Garrison? My supervisor is the director of the marketing department, Mr. Barclay Burns while my boss is Mr. Neil Atkinson, who recently acquired Levi Group. Where do you think you fit into this equation? 
Levi did not say a word. He merely regarded William with a smile. William curled his lips mockingly. Perhaps you're going to tell me that you are actually they. Mysterious Mr. Neil Atkinson? You can stop your daydreaming. Levi Group is no longer related to you now. Moreover, the company is changing its name too. When that time comes, the company's final connection with you will be severed too. Levi took a sip from his drink. You will know sooner or later if I am still related to the company. William ignored Levi and turned to look at Chloe. Why are you hanging out with him? Don't you? No. He was placed behind bars for the last six years because he tried to take advantage of his sister. In law. He's been blacklisted by all the companies in Northampton, so he's destined to fail now. Moreover, he's got a wife. This man is clearly latching on to you with ulterior motives. You have to be careful not to fall into his traps. You'll regret for the rest of your life if this piece of trash takes advantage of you. William advised Chloe with concern. Mr. Patterson added, that's right. You are a successful, young, and beautiful woman. You need to settle down with an outstanding man as soon as possible to prevent a scum like him from attaching himself to you. Look at William. He's young and accomplished. I think he's quite a perfect match for you, M.S. Macy. Chloe responded coldly, I'm sorry, but I do not need the both of you to worry over my matters. Besides, I think Levi is a great man. He's even treating me to dinner tonight. William laughed out loud. Are you kidding me, Chloe? Levi is treating you to a meal? The signature. Dishes you've ordered will cost you at least 20,000. How is he going to pay for that? That's none of your business. Chloe was enraged. William and Mr. Patterson had no other choice but to leave resentfully. Levi and Chloe left afterward. William hurriedly followed them. What? That poor loser doesn't even have a car. He needs Chloe to fetch him. William chided. Mr. Patterson was mad as well. How can you let an ex-convict like him to surpass you, William? William punched the wall forcefully. Levi Garrison is too cunning. I have to find a way to teach him a lesson. Ah, that's right. I just got an idea. William's eyes shone with excitement. In the subsequent two days, the news of Levi Group's preparation for the name-changing ceremony became heated. After all, they were a force that could threaten the Northampton Chamber of Commerce's long-standing influence. A day before the ceremony, Levi received a call from an unknown number. William's voice was heard. After the call connected. Good day, my ex-boss. Levi was puzzled by William's politeness. I am here to inform you of wonderful news. After the name-changing ceremony tomorrow, all employees in Levi Group will receive an increment in salary and benefits ranging from 20 to 40 percent. All the people who worked for you previously will receive an average of 30 percent increment so we decided to throw a party to express our gratitude toward you, our ex-boss. You mustn't reject our invitation because we deliberately hosted this party for you. Everyone is eager to reunite with you. A thought popped into Levi's mind as his lips curved upward. Sure. I'll be there. He agreed to attend. The party. All right then. I can't wait to see you there. The Protector Chapter 204 Over a dozen executives of Levi Group hosted a party in the largest private room in Galaxy Hotel that night. They prepared a lot of champagne inside the room. All the executives present were once Levi's subordinates. Melissa Floyd replaced Matthew Green as the vice president of Levi Group after his disappearance. Melissa used to be Levi's personal secretary. She was an elite who was selected by Levi among one thousand candidates. She was a capable person. Her accomplishment of receiving a promotion from a personal secretary to 
the vice president position reflected her abilities. In the past, Melissa tried to seduce Levi countless times and even borrowed the strength of the media to spread baseless scandals about herself and Levi. Her underhand tactics nearly caused Levi and Zoe to break up back in the day. After that, Levi exposed her tricks and demoted her to an average employee. So she had always harbored hateful feelings toward Levi. Melissa also participated in the scheme to cause Imperial Meadows' bankruptcy. She could not care less about Levi with her current status, but William Hanks offered her an opportunity to humiliate Levi. So she decided to attend to the party too. She wanted to witness Levi's current condition with her own eyes. The others who attended the party were Barclay Burns, the director of the marketing department. Eileen Barn, the director of the PR department, Leroy Bird, the director of the legal department, as well. As the director of the HR department, Kenelm Pitt. All of them underwent vigorous training while Levi was their boss because he wanted to cultivate them. They did not receive speedy promotions. Instead, they were forced to learn and experience more. As an average employee in the company. However, none of them understood Levi's intention. They hated Levi because they felt he was bullying them and restricted their growth in the company. So they were the first group of employees to turn against Levi and joined the Rogers family's rank after Levi's imprisonment. The other subordinates who were loyal to Levi were either drove to their deaths or forced to resign. Barclay and his peers had the potential, so they managed to climb up the corporate hierarchy and landed jobs as executives. Even now, they were still not grateful for Levi's cultivation. They were still under the impression that Levi mistreated them. So they loathed Levi deeply. They blamed Levi all the more because they were promoted immediately and received a high salary the moment Levi was gone. In their mind, Levi nearly ruined their lives. They were all insignificant employees of the group under Levi's management. But all of them became successful people with an annual salary of over a million. After Levi's departure. So they always shared a private joke among themselves, thank God Levi went to jail. Is he here yet? Everyone was getting impatient. Levi and Morris were extremely strict in the past, so their employees did not have the courage to even look them in the eyes. But the high and mighty Levi Garrison six years ago was now an average Joe in the city. They could not wait for Levi to witness their achievements. All of them wanted to humiliate Levi to their heart's content. Oh! Our ex-boss is finally here. William announced cheerfully. Levi followed behind him. He entered the room with an indifferent appearance while giving off an overwhelming presence. Most of the people inside the room were almost suffocated by his domineering aura. Everyone was dazed as they did not expect Levi to still carry his imposing manner from before. They wanted to direct volleys of insults at Levi the moment he entered the room, but they simply could not utter a word. The first person to break the silence was Melissa Floyd. She came to a halt in front of Levi in her high heels and said with a smile, My beloved Mr. Garrison, you're finally released from prison? This is not really favorable since that place suited you the most. Why didn't you stay there for a few more years? Personally, I would suggest that you stay behind bars forever. The atmosphere inside the room turned heavy after Melissa addressed Levi with the harsh words. The Protector Chapter 205 Kenelm Pitt, the director of the HR department scoffed. That's right. Didn't you always admire the Military management style, Mr. Garrison? Life in prison suits you the best. The director of the PR department, Eileen Barn added, that's true. You must have stayed behind bars for six years because you enjoyed the environment. Everyone greeted Levi with insults. Please, come in, my beloved Mr. Garrison. Melissa ushered Levi into the room. Upon entering, Levi saw the decorations inside the room immediately. They even hung a couple of banners on the wall. 
The first banner read, Thank God for your imprisonment, Levi Garrison. We would not achieve our success today if you did not go to jail. Printed on the second banner were the words, We hope you stay in prison forever, Levi Garrison. Levi noticed a lot of champagne inside the room as well, but he did not understand the reason behind the large amount of drinks. Everyone was disappointed to see Levi's reaction because he was not infuriated after looking at the banner. They asked Levi to sit down, then proceeded to surround him. Melissa said, I have to thank you, Mr. Garrison. You forced me to start from the bottom of the company with a monthly salary of a little over 4,000 and an annual salary of 50,000. Do you know how much I am making per year now? My current annual salary is 50 million. Eileen added, you turned us into a bunch of cheap labors by using the excuse of trying to cultivate us. I did not receive a salary of close to 10,000 previously, but look at me now. My yearly bonus alone is already at least 10 million. The marketing director, Barclay chided, thank you so much, Levi Garrison. I used to go to work on a scooter but I am now driving a Lamborghini to work. The director of the legal department, Leroy was furious. This is all your fault, Levi Garrison. You nearly ruined our lives. Do you see how terrible our lives were? You were the cause of our miseries. Kenelm shouted, serves you right for facing jail time. It was because of that only did we get the opportunity to flourish in our lives. Levi Group has been doing so well since the Rogers family took control. The company is worth it. Least 7 billion in the market now. Someone mentioned. Levi suddenly laughed. The company's value increased only a mere 3 billion in 6 years, and yet. You're so proud of that achievement. That, everyone was stunned. Levi continued. Levi Group was already worth $4 billion during its first year of establishment. We were growing at an exponential rate. We even did a simulation to project our company's growth. Levi Group would be considered a failure if the company failed to achieve a market value of less than $50 billion after six years. Everyone was rendered speechless. They knew Levi was indeed telling the truth because they were informed of the company's potential in the past. But Levi Group's growth turned negative during its second year after Levi's imprisonment. The company only showed gradual improvements in its performances for the subsequent years. None of Levi Group's employees knew that their core technology and advantages in the market were taken away by another party. William retorted immediately when he saw that everybody had fell silent. Nonsense. What you said was all hypothetical. How can you rely on that to survive in the business world? Can you guarantee a positive return every year? Melissa recollected her thoughts as well. That's right. There are so many changes in the market every year. You cannot possibly predict every turn of events. Eileen frowned. Let's be honest, Levi Garrison. We would only stay as mere lowly subordinates even. If the company developed into a 50 billion corporation. There's no way we would be as successful as. We are now. Leroy, Kenelm, and the others agreed. He's right. Your achievements have got nothing to do with us. We wouldn't be making as much money as we are now if we stayed under your management. The Protector Chapter 206 Melissa said. You may not know this, Levi Garrison, but Mr. Atkinson has decided to increase all the employees' salaries since he acquired the company. I will be receiving a 30% increment as the vice president of the company. You can calculate the additional amount yourself. That's right. Look at how generous Mr. Atkinson is. Don't you feel ashamed by how petty you were? Others mocked Levi. Levi put on a wry smile. How can I be oblivious to this? I was the one that made the arrangements. After all. Melissa lifted Levi's chin daringly. My beloved Mr. Garrison, 
I am not embarrassed to say this. You rejected me when I confessed to you when I was still working as your personal secretary. Do you regret your decision now? Do you still think that Zoe Lopez is better than me? Levi beamed at her. That's a given. Zoe is and always will be better than you. Melissa laughed out loud. You're a fool, Levi Garrison. That woman is close to announcing bankruptcy. But she had received the necessary investment. Levi firmly believed in Zoe's capabilities. He knew. She merely lacked the opportunities to prove herself. So he gave her the opportunity she needed the most. Ha ha ha. Everyone inside the room burst into laughter after listening to Levi. You're hilarious, Levi Garrison. Don't you know which company was the one that invested in Zoe's company? It's our company, Levi Group, that provided her with the capital. Although Mr. Atkinson proposed to invest in her company, most of the procedures are handled by us. Ms. Floyd has to sign the papers, and the investment has to go through the Director of Finance. Department, Mr. Snyder. They are the people who will decide the fate of that money now. Everyone. Sneered. Melissa pointed at Levi. To tell you the truth, Levi Garrison. We have the authority to decide whether. Levi Group will invest in Zoe's company. We can always pull out of the deal or postpone the date to. Transfer the money to them. Perhaps I can pull some tricks so that Zoe has to compensate us in return. For violating the contract. William patted Levi's shoulder. Did you hear that, you arrogant scum? We are the ones that are in. Control of you and Zoe Lopez's fates. That's right. You have to follow our orders obediently, Levi Garrison. Otherwise, we will force you. And Zoe to the brink of desperation. Kenelm laughed wickedly. Are you threatening me? Levi could hardly contain his urge to laugh. I plan to expose these traitors tomorrow at the company. Well, they certainly saved the trouble by surrendering themselves. Now. Of course. Levi Group will pull out of the deal immediately with a single order from me. I will also include Zoe's company on the blacklist. No one will dare to invest in Imperial Meadows after that. All she can do by that time is to wait for bankruptcy to knock on her door. Melissa boasted. Then what should I do for all of you to let Zoe off the hook? Levi asked. Melissa straightened herself and walked toward the cart filled with numerous bottles of champagne. That's easy. We will let her off the hook if you obey our orders. Melissa Floyd grabbed a bottle of champagne after she spoke. Bam! The cork popped open all of a sudden as Melissa aimed the bottle at Levi. Whoosh! Levi was doused by the jet of champagne. Everyone followed Melissa's action. Each of them took a bottle of champagne. Bam! 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 The corks of the bottles popped open after they shook the bottles vigorously. Then they sprayed the Champagnes in Levi's direction. Levi was thoroughly drenched in the champagne shower. He finally knew the reason behind the large amount of drinks. They wanted to humiliate me with the bottles of champagne. Ha ha ha. Whoosh. Sounds of their evil laughter were mixed with the splashing sound of champagne. The Protector Chapter 207. All of them vented six years worth of pent up resentment in their chests at Levi. He was put to shame. By everyone. Soon, they wasted every bottle of champagne on Levi. Levi did not care about the treatment. He merely acted as if he took a shower with the champagne. I. Will let them pay the price for what they did and what they are doing to me now tomorrow. They will. Taste cruelty at its finest tomorrow. Kenelm was not satisfied. He shouted at Levi. Get over here and lick my shoes clean. Leroy, Barkley, and the others mimicked Kenelm as well. Levi ignored them. William jeered at Levi. You should take a look at yourself in the mirror now. How can you become so 
useless to the extent of not putting up any resistance? Weren't you a domineering boss six years ago? Where did that attitude of yours go? I can't even bring myself to insult you further after looking at how pitiful you are. Talia smirked. If you kneel and let me ride on you while you crawl around the room, I will promise not to trouble Zoe in the future, Levi Garrison. Levi stood still. Everyone thought he was hesitating. Kneel down right now. Don't you care about Zoe Lopez at all? Know your place, Levi Garrison. You only deserve to live a lowly life like this from now on. Everyone hurled insults at him. Melissa crossed her arms in front of her chest and sized up Levi proudly. Do as I say immediately. Melissa could only be satisfied when she gets to step on Levi literally. After all, she was a mere secretary in the past and was fired by Levi Garrison. That's enough. A girl stepped forward and stopped everyone at that moment. Levi recognized the girl. She's the intern I selected back in the day, Elena Holmes. I remember her for her professionalism. Elena was one of the team leaders in the finance department now. Inwardly, she was always grateful toward Levi. How can all of you forget about Mr. Garrison's kindness? Do you think you will be where you are? Now if he didn't hire you in the past? Moreover, he did not do anything wrong, so why do you hate him? So much. Elena raised her voice. Humph. What are you doing, Elena? Don't you hate him? Do you think you will accomplish your current success with him managing the company? Are you betraying us? Fine. You don't have to come. To work starting tomorrow. Hand in your resignation letter to the HR department tomorrow. They. Director of the Finance Department, Bob Snyder scolded. That's right. You're fired. Melissa spoke as well. Elena broke down in tears. I was merely expressing my thoughts. Why am I fired? Melissa said coldly after Elena began to cry. Damn it. You've ruined the atmosphere. Let's go back. Now. I need to prepare for tomorrow's name-changing ceremony anyway. She sneered at Levi before leaving, don't worry, Levi Garrison. This is not the end. I will mess Zoe. Lopez's life up if you do not obey me. Eileen took out two stacks of cash and tossed the money in Levi's face. Pay the bill later. You can. Keep the change, you filthy beggar. Ha ha ha, everyone laughed. They felt contented after venting their anger and resentment. Levi and Elena were left alone inside the private room. Do you regret what you did? Levi asked. Elena wiped the tears off her face and shook her head. No. They've done some pretty despicable things to achieve their current success. I have wanted to part ways with them since a long time ago. The Protector Chapter 208 Levi nodded satisfied with Elena's determination. Don't worry. No one will fire you. Come to work. As usual tomorrow. At that moment, Elena thought he saw glimpses of the thriving Levi Garrison from six years ago. All right, Mr. Garrison. I will do as you say. Elena answered. Melissa and the other executives were filled with exhilaration after leaving the hotel. This is awesome. I still can't believe we really toyed with Levi Garrison earlier. That's right. I can't even find words to describe this amazing feeling. Melissa reminded them, all right, settle down. It's time to go back and prepare for tomorrow's name-changing ceremony. Levi. Morris Group will become a corporation worth over 10 billion starting. Tomorrow. We are all going to have a better future going forward. Understood. Everyone began to imagine how their lives would prosper. Zoe's heart ached when she saw how Levi looked when he returned home that night. I know everything. They sent me the video. William and his friends recorded the scene where Levi was showered with champagne and deliberately sent the video to Zoe earlier. 
Tears welled up in Zoe's eyes as she witnessed Levi's helplessness. I heard you suffered the humiliation on your own accord because of me. This is all because of my incompetence. I can do nothing because Levi Group happens to be the investor. They are in control of my life now. Zoe was filled with guilt. Levi smiled. It's fine, dear. They will face retribution. I'm going to take a shower now. Help me. Prepare a set of fresh clothes. I will attend the name-changing ceremony for Levi Group tomorrow. Okay. Zoe stared at Levi's figure from behind while thinking to herself. I will not let him suffer. Any more in the future. I swear. The next day, at Levi Group's building. Elena went to work as always. But someone from the HR department handed Elena a discharge letter the moment she walked through the door. You can leave this place after you receive your salary from the finance department. Elena. Holmes, you're hereby fired. Elena was stunned. She thought Levi had made the necessary arrangements for her. I guess he was only comforting me. Moreover, he can't even protect Zoe Lopez since he was released from prison. Recently, it's a given he won't be able to protect me too. But I do not blame him and I will never regret. The words I said last night. Elena went to the finance department to receive the rest of her salary. Then she went to the HR department to deal with the discharge procedures. People pointed at her and whispered among themselves wherever Elena went. Not only was she fired by Melissa and her gang, but they had also spread baseless scandals of Elena fooling around with aged men that has cost the company's reputation. Girls like her may appear to be pure and innocent on the surface, but who knows, she might have slept with countless of old men. That's right. She's always pretending to be innocent when in truth she's just a slut. I also heard that she gave birth to children for three aged men at the same time. She's shameless. Unbearable insults and abusive remarks rang beside Elena's ears on her way out of the company. She could no longer contain herself as tears streamed down her cheeks uncontrollably. At that moment, Melissa and the other executives saw the scene near the elevator. They sneered, this is the repercussion for disobeying me. The other executives laughed smugly. Elena ran out of the company with her head lowered. Bam! She bumped into someone. Elena looked up only to see Levi Garrison in front of her. What's the matter? Did they fire you? Levi asked. Elena nodded. All right. Follow me. I will seek justice for you. Elena hesitated. Do you have faith in me? Levi looked at Elena in an assertive manner. I do. Elena decided to risk everything. I have nothing to lose anyway. What if this turns out to be a success? The Protector Chapter 209 The name-changing ceremony was scheduled to begin at 10 o'clock in the morning. However, the new owner of Levi Group, Neil Atkinson, hosted a meeting for all members of Levi. Group senior management at 8 o'clock in the morning. Melissa and the others were waiting impatiently inside the meeting room. She took out a compact mirror to check her makeup. Do you think there's anything wrong with my outfit? She asked Eileen Barn to help rearrange her clothes. The others were tidying up their appearances as well. After all, it was their first meeting with their new and mysterious boss. So they wanted to leave a good First impression. Melissa was even prepared to offer her body. I will conquer the new owner of Levi Group. I did not. Climb so high up the corporate ladder with my capabilities alone. I'd achieved my current position. Because I've slept with Howard Corbin, Oswald Rogers, and many other influential men. This is my. Go to method to receive promotions, after all. Over a hundred members of Levi Group's senior management had arrived inside the meeting room as they waited in silence. They tensed up the moment they heard footsteps rang in the hallway. 
A young man wearing sunglasses entered the meeting room while being surrounded by multiple assistants and secretaries. Everyone hurriedly stood up. Kieran's appearance surprised everyone after he removed his sunglasses. He's so young. I heard there. Are rumors saying that he is Morris Atkinson's uncle, but he's clearly more suited to be his younger brother. Indeed, Kieran was only 20 years old at that time. Melissa's eyes gleamed. I did not expect our new president to be a handsome young man. I can easily handle someone like him. I am sure he will succumb to my allure if I put in just a little effort. Despite Kieran's young age, his domineering presence was distinguished. Everyone felt chills traveling down their spines when his gaze swept across the room. Everyone, please take a seat. Let me introduce myself. My name is Neil Atkinson, and I recently acquired both Levi Group and Garrison Group from the Rogers family. I am currently the acting president of these two corporations. Melissa said immediately after Kieran introduced himself, May I know what's the agenda for today's meeting, Mr. Atkinson? Please provide us with further instructions. Everyone was not enlightened of the reason behind the sudden meeting hosted by Kieran. Kieran smiled. Let's be patient and wait a little longer. Melissa asked curiously, Are we waiting for someone else? Do you mean there's another person who is going to attend this meeting, Mr. Atkinson. Kieran nodded. Of course. Did I not make myself clear earlier? I am only the acting president. That means that I am only in charge of showing my face in public when dealing with all company-related matters. Kenelm Pitt from the legal department raised a question. Are you saying the real owner of Morris? Group is another person and is making all the decisions from behind the scene. Kieran smiled. Yes. You're right. To put this into simpler words, I am only working for my master. Everyone gasped in astonishment. Neil Atkinson is already capable of taking control of the Rogers. Family's possession. How much more powerful can his master be? Melissa responded instantaneously. So what you're saying is that we are waiting for the real owner of the company? Yes. That's right. He's the one that convened this meeting, and he will be here soon. Kieran answered. Everyone felt more anxious than before. Who is the new owner of Morris Group? Time seemed to crawl slower as every minute felt like a century. Everyone inside the meeting room straightened themselves in their seats when they heard footsteps reverberated in the hallway. The door to the meeting room was pushed open. But the person who entered the room was Elena Holmes. Even Kieran was momentarily dazed. Who is she? All the executives were enraged to see Elena, especially the director of the finance department, Bob. Snyder. He chided at once, What are you doing here, Elena Holmes? This is an exclusive meeting. Room for the senior management of the company. You're already fired, so why are you here? Melissa was angered too. Yeah, what are you doing here? Do you think you are qualified to be here? Tell me, who permitted you to come in here? The Protector Chapter 210. I'm the one that permitted her to enter. A man's voice was heard at that moment. Levi made his appearance as everyone inside the room stared in his direction. He entered the meeting. Room together with Elena. What is the meaning of this, Levi Garrison? You do not belong here. Melissa rebuked him in rage. Then she pointed at the director of the security department. What's the matter with you? Why did you allow a scum like him to enter the building? He even managed to come all the way up here. That's right. What are you doing here, Levi Garrison? Do you think Levi Garrison can support you, Elena? He's just a piece of trash. Leroy, Kenelm, and the others were hopping mad at the moment. What will happen if they offend Mr. Atkinson? But something unbelievable and unimaginable happened the next moment. 
Levi walked toward the front of the meeting room where Kieran was seated. Kieran regarded Levi with admiration and offered him the seat politely. You're here. Levi took the seat and crossed his legs on the tabletop. He answered cheerfully. All of you were. Asking me for a reason behind my appearance. Well, I am here to attend the meeting. Kieran reported next to him. Sir, all 107 members of Levi Group's senior management is here. Please. Provide us with further instructions. Boom. Kieran's words hit everyone inside the room like a ton of bricks. Boom, boom, boom. Everyone was shocked to their cores. They were in utter disbelief. Levi Garrison is the owner of Levi. Group. Elena frowned as her mind went completely blank. Melissa, who was closest to where Levi was seated, felt her heart stop beating altogether at that moment. Her breathing ceased, and her face turned paper white like that of a lifeless body. Barclay Burns, William Hanks, Eileen Barn, and Leroy Bird were petrified. Everyone inside the room was dumbfounded. No one expected the new owner of Levi Group to be Levi Garrison. Wasn't he released from prison a short while ago? He should be penniless, so how is he capable of acquiring Levi Group? At that moment, clarity washed over Melissa and the others. Neil Atkinson is not related to Morris. Atkinson. Levi Garrison wants to commemorate Morris Atkinson, so he's changing the company's name to Morris Group. He's also the reason why Morris's parents can stay in that luxurious villa. Levi. Group is determined to invest in Zoe's company despite the ban ordered by the Northampton. Chamber of Commerce because Levi Garrison is still in charge of the company. All the questions troubling their minds were resolved in that instance. The thought of Levi Garrison being the new owner of the company never crossed anyone's mind. Because Levi was totally out of their considerations. Levi glanced at Melissa and her friends. Then he beamed at them. Hello everyone, we meet again. Kenelm Pitt, who was relatively aged, passed out on the floor with a thud when he was reminded of the insults he directed toward Levi last night. Barclay Burns and William Hanks trembled frightfully. They felt a hot and humid sensation trickling down their legs as a pool of steaming liquid formed where they stood. They literally peed in their pants out of fear. Leroy Bird, Bob Snyder, and the others slumped into their seats as their legs turned to jelly. All there. Strengths appeared to have seeped away from their bodies. Eileen Barn cried in terror. Melissa crumbled under the overwhelming pressure as she saw that Levi was staring at her the entire time. She felt like puking a mouthful of blood. Bizarre reactions were observed on those who participated in the gathering last night. Everyone was confused by that peculiar scene, including Kieran. Levi slowly took out a cigarette and Kieran hurriedly lit the cigarette for him. Everyone felt restless and uneasy. After taking a puff of his cigarette, Levi said, Tell me, what should I do about what transpired last night? The Protector Chapter 211 Levi's words sounded like the Grim Reapers calling to Melissa and her friends. Thud. 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 Melissa and 38 other members of the senior management knelt on the floor. Thump, thump, thump. They slammed their foreheads against the ground frantically. All of them did not seem to care, even as their foreheads were bleeding. That was the least of their concerns because they sensed death closing in on them. William Hanks and Melissa Floyd were feeling the most fear out of everyone who knelt on the ground. Because William was the one that suggested the gathering, while Melissa orchestrated the rest. Levi's voice rang beside William's ears all of a sudden. I am still your boss. He was telling the truth. Levi waved his hand. The rest of you stand behind me. Everyone did not understand Levi's intention, but they gathered behind him anyway. Melissa Floyd and 38 other people were the only ones left kneeling inside the spacious meeting room. They did not stop slamming their heads against the floor. Many were already bleeding profusely from their foreheads. 
Please forgive us, Mr. Garrison. We've made a mistake. We've committed a grave error. Oh! How we regretted our actions! Why did we provoke Levi Garrison? This is all William's fault. We would not have sought revenge against Levi in the first place if it were not for him. Levi Garrison was long gone from our minds previously. Everyone shot a resentful look toward William Hanks. They wanted so badly to rip him apart. Levi remained indifferent while they begged him for mercy. He ordered loudly, bring the things. Here. Over a dozen muscular men clad in black outfit entered the meeting room at once. Each of them carried a tightly sealed wooden barrel with unknown content. The people kneeling on the floor felt their hearts sank with a thud as they sensed something bad was about to happen, looking at those tightly sealed barrels. Levi grinned. Don't you guys enjoy showing off your allures by soaking yourselves in champagne? Let me fulfill your desires today. The burly men removed the caps of the barrels right after Levi waved his hands. So smelly. A horrible stench filled the room instantly. Everyone felt as if they fell into a cesspit because the reek was unbearable. Could it be? Everyone had guessed the content of the barrels. Manure. Whoosh. The muscular men dumped over ten barrels of manure over the heads of Melissa and her gang. Levi deliberately prepared a manure shower for them. Arg, <laughs> they shrieked. All of them dressed glamorously for the meeting, but they were now covered in manure from heads to toes. The filth even entered their mouths. The others, who witnessed the scene, could never imagine that the highly paid elites of the society were met with such an outcome. This is the worst punishment ever. These people are now fired and permanently blacklisted from re-entering Levi Group. Levi announced. Ah. Hysterical wails filled the meeting room once again. That penalty meant that our lives are officially ruined. Levi glanced at the miserable crowd and added, Elena Holmes will be Morris Group's finance department director from now on. Unprecedented excitement washed over Elena. This is unbelievable. Not only am I not fired from the company, but I am also promoted to the department director's position. This unexpected turn of events is happening only because I stood up against them last night. Melissa and her friends were astounded to hear Elena's promotion. Karma really is a B. Levi straightened himself and ordered coldly, clean up the mess, especially those trashes. I don't want to see them in here anymore. Yes, sir. Kieran nodded. Levi led the rest of the crowd to another meeting room. Members of Garrison Group's senior management were waiting for them in that room. The first thing that Levi did was to incorporate Garrison Group into Levi Group. The Garrison family had prepared everything, so all Levi had to do was to sign the papers. The Protector Chapter 212 The ceremony to change the company's name was held after all preparations were in place. All the reporters from every major media and newspaper gathered to witness the ceremony. A stage and various equipment were installed on the spacious plaza in front of Levi Group's building. Levi remained hidden as usual. He sat inside his office, casting his gaze outside the window with the entire Northampton's view spanned before him. He could observe the happenings at the plaza clearly from where he sat. Kieran would be the person to attend the ceremony this time but he wore sunglasses to cover up his face. As usual. Should I attend the ceremony now, sir? Go ahead. At that moment, Levi could see a few mysterious and unwelcome guests lurking around the venue as his eyes swept through the crowd. They are probably men from the Northampton Chamber of Commerce or other business competitors. I suppose they are here to investigate Neil Atkinson's identity. The name-changing ceremony began at 10 o'clock. Kieran walked up the stage with all eyes on him. The reporters spammed the shutters on their camera continuously. Countless powerful men in the industry began searching for Kieran's background information as his 
pictures and videos spread like wildfire. But Kieran's sunglasses fulfilled its function as everyone had a hard time recognizing his facial features. Their intensive search resulted in nothing. No one could figure out anything about Neil Atkinson. Standing next to Neil were the people in charge of Levi Group and Garrison Group previously. Mr. and Mrs. Atkinson attended the ceremony as well. They wanted to witness that significant moment. Kieran made the official announcement. Levi Group and Garrison Group has signed a merger. Agreement earlier. These two corporations will join forces from now on and operates under the name. Morris Group. Bam, bam, bam. A stir rippled across the crowd as ceremonial flowers shot up into the sky. Mr. and Mrs. Atkinson were tear-stricken. They looked up the sky and sobbed. Are you seeing this? Son? The company is now named after you. The reporters were getting impatient at that point. May I know what's your relationship with Mr. Morris Atkinson, Mr. Atkinson. Please describe your relationship with Mr. Neil Atkinson, Mr. Rowan Atkinson. The reporters were very interested in the relationship between the two parties. Kieran smiled pensively. Relationship? Well, all I can say is that we're a family. Kieran's statement provided food for thought for the reporters. There was obviously a hidden meaning behind his words, but none of the reporters could figure out what he was implying. They tried to sound Kieran out with further questions, but Kieran answered without revealing anything. The question and answer session with the reporters ended swiftly. The subsequent segment was the highlight of the ceremony. They were going to change the inscribed board of the company from Levi Group to Morris Group. The name-changing ceremony could only be considered a success after they changed the inscribed board. The workers quickly brought the new board over and removed the old, inscribed board for Levi Group. Kieran was about to hang the new inscribed board to officiate the event when chaos erupted at the scene. Something is happening. Look over there. Someone shouted all of a sudden. Over a hundred men clad in black clothes appeared out of nowhere and headed in the direction of the stage. They wore face masks to cover up their faces and wielded baseball bats in each of their hands. Everyone was frightened by the imposing manner of those scary men. Break everything. Crash this whole place. The man leading the way shouted. The men in black hastened their steps and surged forward. The media and the guests of honor gathered around the stage were startled. All hell broke loose at the scene. The Protector Chapter 213 The men had only one goal. They wanted to disrupt the name-changing ceremony and thoroughly discredit Neil Atkinson as well as Levi Group. All of them raised the baseball bats in their hands and rushed forward. They were merely 50 meter away from the venue. Levi witnessed everything from the president's office. A voice was heard through the earpiece Levi was wearing. Sir, all 30 snipers have locked onto the targets. Please provide us with further instruction. No one knew that a few teams of snipers had surrounded Levi Group's building by positioning themselves in the skyscrapers nearby. The snipers aimed their rifles at the incoming mob. They had been waiting for those men in black to show up. Levi gave the order as the mob moved closer to the crowd. Shoot! Azure Dragon relayed Levi's order as he commanded. Attention to all sniper teams. Shoot! I repeat. Shoot! Thirty snipers began to execute the order simultaneously. The man charging ahead of the mob lost his balance and fell face first to the floor. Thump! 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 The rest of the men armed with baseball bats were shot after a split second and they fell onto the ground as well. Kieran and the others stared at the astonishing sight as over a hundred men fell onto the ground and stayed motionless afterward. No one expected that to happen. What's wrong with them? Why are they lying on the ground now? They were charging toward us just a few moments ago. Everyone was puzzled, including those lying on the floor. The angry mob lay on the ground with their bodies numbed. 
they could not muster any strength regardless of how hard they tried. No one could figure out what had actually happened. Inside the president's office, Azure Dragon's voice was heard from the earpiece. Sir, the sniper teams had accomplished their mission. Well done. Retreat. Levi commanded. The snipers disappeared without a trace upon receiving the order. The snipers had loaded their rifles with shots containing anesthetics instead of real bullets. The dose of the anesthetic shots was potent enough to paralyze even an elephant. Most importantly, the shots would not leave any visible wound on the skin. Kieran addressed the crowd after everyone calmed down. Well, it seems like there's a lot of people that are eager to congratulate us for the success of this name-changing ceremony. I am beyond honored. Thank you. The people lying on the ground felt extremely uncomfortable. Their bodies would not move, so they could not escape even if they wanted to. In the end, all of them bore witness as Kieran changed the new inscribed board and officially renamed the company to Morris Group. Xavier Fields sent his men to capture the entire mob after the ceremony ended. The anesthetics wore off by the time they arrived at the police station. They had no way to figure out what happened to them at that point. But none of them could escape. Punishment for harassing the public. Those men were actually recruited by the Northampton Whirlwind Security Company. A few elderly gathered beside a famous lake in Northampton. They were Eric Robinson, Baldwin Williamson, and the gang. Clifford Anderson said grimly. But that's impossible. I did not turn to the underworld bosses for help. Because I wanted a secured outcome. So I deliberately assigned this task to the prestigious Whirlwind. Security Company. I requested them to complete the task as quickly as possible and flee the scene. Afterward. I did not expect them to commit such a blunder. The Protector Chapter 214 Wallace Henderson was caught in perplexity. That's right. Most of the men recruited by Whirlwind. Security Company are ex-policemen and ex-soldiers. They are well known for their efficiency and skills. I heard the team leaders were even mercenaries in the past. So why did they fell flat on their face? All of a sudden, Eric took a deep breath. This must be Neil Atkinson's doing. He made the preparations in advance. But I do not understand how all of them fell at the same time. Even those men who experienced that bizarre fall did not know what happened to them. Baldwin stroked his chin. Perhaps we underestimated Neil Atkinson. By the way, have you figured out his identity yet? The rest of them shook their heads. We've utilized all our connections to investigate his identity, but nothing came up. His information seems to be classified. At that moment, the heir to the Anderson family, Virgil Anderson, walked hastily toward the elderlies. Father, uncles, the vice commander in chief, Mr. Hoyles, from the war zone has updated me with the latest news. He told me he is somewhat familiar with Neil Atkinson, and he is still investigating this matter. He wanted me to reassure all of you to be patient because he will find out Neil's identity sooner or later. Eric Robinson's son, Sheldon Robinson, brought news as well. Mr. Cook told me Neil came from the Northwest region. He is still trying to look into other aspects of his background. Grover's information was accurate. Kieran was indeed serving the army in the Northwest War Zone. Haha. <laughs> That's great. We will observe Morris Group's plan for now. Eric said. Clifford nodded. I've dealt with Whirlwind Security Company. The Northampton Chamber of Commerce will have nothing to do with them. Inside Morris Group. Levi proposed future development plans for the company. We lack staff at the moment because we fired a lot of executives previously. Moreover, we've recently acquired Garrison Group as well. First, we have to recruit the company's veterans who left due to pressure in the past. Then we will absorb 
talents from all over Arudaya into our company. Kiran scratched his head embarrassingly. I am adept at war and training soldiers, sir. But doing business is not my forte. The Northampton Chamber of Commerce had taken control of Levi Group's core technology, but these pieces of information has been carved into my mind. We will produce similar products as them and sell our items at a lower price, Levi smiled cunningly. Kieran gave him a thumbs up. This is a brilliant move. Our products will certainly affect the existing market if we offer a more competitive price. More importantly, they've stolen our technology. So they cannot stir up trouble either to prevent exposing their crime. They can only stand by and watch as Morris Group take over the entire market little by little. We cannot leave the vice president position empty. I need to find someone capable of taking up this responsibility. Have you found a suitable candidate? Levi asked. Kieran nodded. Yes, sir. I've shortlisted two very competent candidates. They will be here to attend the interview tomorrow. Levi was satisfied with Kieran's efficiency. Great. I will participate in the interview tomorrow to select the best candidate. Levi returned home late in the night. He spent some time chatting with Zoe. Zoe was amazed. Mr. Atkinson is so impressive. Evidently, she had seen the news report that day. Levi had the urge to inform her that Neil Atkinson did not know a thing in the field of business. Oh. Did you know? My best friend, Iris Annabelle, is returning from overseas. I'm a little busy. Tomorrow, so can you help me pick her up at the airport? Zoe asked. Okay. I'll pick her up tomorrow. Levi was acquainted with Iris too. She was a top beauty, on PAR with Zoe, in the past during their high school years. The Protector Chapter 215 Iris is a very competent person. She obtained two master's degrees from two of the top universities in the country, then she studied abroad and stayed there to develop her career in the finance industry. Zoe was curious. She's doing so well abroad at the moment. So why is she returning to the country all of a sudden? Levi was puzzled too. It's best to not try to figure out a woman's thought process. They are complicated. Beings after all. What did she say to you? Levi asked. Zoe answered joyfully. She told me she's returning to Northampton to develop her career. She has. Even bought a house here. However, Zoe frowned slightly as confusion glinted in her mesmerizing eyes. I wonder which. Company in Northampton is capable of attracting Iris's attention? The next day, Levi drove Zoe's car to the airport early in the morning. Levi waited for a short while at the airport's exit before Iris Annabelle showed up. Iris was a slender woman at the height of 170 centimeters. Her long legs were even comparable to professional models. She wore a pair of Ferragamo high heels and a black coat. Iris appeared to be overbearing and indifferent while wearing a pair of shades on her delicate face. Her temperament was outstanding to the extent of convincing others to think of her as a famous star. Passers-by began taking photos of her with their phones. Iris recognized Levi immediately. She strode up to him and tossed him her luggage. Send me to Morris Group before nine o'clock. I'm in a hurry. She demanded. Levi felt helpless as he thought to himself. I came all the way here to pick you up. Not only did you fail to show your gratitude, but you are treating me like your servant. But he stuffed the luggage into the trunk anyway. There's only an hour left. Hurry up. Iris ordered harshly after she eyed her expensive Patek Philippe wristwatch upon entering the car. All right. I'll make sure you reach in time. Levi started the engine. Iris removed her shades, revealing her delicate facial features and flawless complexion. Iris Annabelle. 
was definitely a woman with beauty comparable to that of Zoe Lopez. She sized up Levi. You're still planning to stay by Zoe's side? She asked out of the blue. Why should I leave her? Levi was bewildered. Because you do not deserve her. Putting aside your poverty, the fact that you were imprisoned. Previously was sufficient to make you an unworthy partner for Zoe. I am not discriminating against. You, but your tainted record will affect Zoe's future. Her company is getting on the right track now. She will expand her business after receiving the investment from Morris Group. When that time comes, Zoe can finally cut ties with the Lopez family. She will be one of the most respectable figures in North. Hampton's business world. What about you? What can you contribute to her success except being a burden for staying by her side? Others will jeer at her because of your bad record, not to mention the reason behind your imprisonment will be discussed behind Zoe's back when she's successful. You probably cannot fathom the impact of this issue, but you can see what I'm trying to tell you, right? You and Zoe will not benefit from staying together. Iris spoke eloquently as she bombarded Levi with her own opinions. She continued upon noticing Levi's silence. Also, I no longer see any fighting spirit in you. You are no longer the same Levi Garrison from before. You bowed down in the face of harsh reality. The Levi Garrison from six years ago will not stoop so low as to chauffeur me from the airport. Levi glanced at Iris through the rearview mirror. He asked. So. So you have to get a divorce with Zoe. I will interfere and handle this matter once I settle down. Here. Iris said domineeringly. The Protector Chapter 216. Levi put on a wry smile. You have got to be kidding me. I'm not married to you anyway. Zoe is my best friend. I cannot allow her to ruin her life. Iris said coldly. Unless. Unless what? Her words piqued Levi's interest. Unless you become successful again. You have to be as accomplished as Zoe to deserve her. Otherwise, I will never agree for you to stay by her side. Levi laughed. I am the one who aided Zoe to achieve her current success, you know. Iris grew maced. She questioned Levi in an icy tone. Are you telling me that you regained control of Levi Group and proposed to change the company's name to Morris Group? Levi grinned. You're a smart lass all right. You're absolutely correct. Can you be a little more grounded, Levi Garrison? You're ridiculous. I've researched everything about Morris Group. The chairman of the company, Neil Atkinson, has got nothing to do with you. Iris kept quiet after she spoke her piece. Pin drop silence filled the atmosphere inside the car. Since young, Iris had been an assertive and domineering person, not to mention she had the abilities to back up her attitude. She became more arrogant after she accumulated experiences and established her reputation in the financial world abroad. Iris would only treat a few formidable figures in the financial world with respect at that point. I did not care to take Levi Garrison in the past seriously, much less this Levi Garrison who was recently released from prison. I realize he's a really terrible man after that brief conversation we had. Women like me and Zoe are far too good for someone as lowly as him. I've made up my mind. One of my goals for returning to the country is to separate Levi from Zoe. They arrived at Morris Group after a short while. Bring my luggage back to Zoe's place for now. I will contact Zoe again at night. Iris took a few bills and tossed the money at Levi before getting out of the car. Don't worry. I'm paying you for your hard work. In Iris's opinion, Levi was a mere servant who can be tasked around with money. Levi thought to himself as he looked at the money now lying on the passenger seat. She's humiliating. Me with money. Whatever. I'll bring her luggage back for now. 
Kieran called just as Levi was about to leave. Where are you, sir? Both candidates have just arrived. We'll be starting the interview at 10 o'clock sharp, as I mentioned previously. Levi patted his head after listening to Kieran's reminder. I totally forgot about this because of Iris. I'm already here. I'll head upstairs right away. Levi answered. All right. I will make the arrangements now. Kieran said. Kieran had settled everything by the time Levi reached his office. Inside his office was a screen showing the live surveillance footage inside the meeting room. Both candidates would undergo their interviews in the meeting room in a short while. Kieran was present inside the meeting room. But he was merely there to show his face. The other executives would be the ones to question the candidates. Elena Holmes was one of the executives to participate in the interview. Kieran was wearing an earpiece to relay Levi's questions to the candidates. The first candidate, please enter now. Thus, the interview officially began. The first candidate was a woman. She had a slender body figure and captivating looks. Levi was dumbfounded when he saw the woman's appearance through the screen. That's Iris Annabelle. So that's why she returned from abroad. She's here to apply for the vice president position in Morris. Group. The Protector Chapter 217. No wonder she asked me to send her here. This is all Iris's fault. I would have grasped the situation. Earlier if she did not bash me with all those insults just now. Iris's interview started before Levi could recollect his thoughts. She was indeed a highly competent candidate as she wasted no time to impress the interviewers with her performance. Levi recomposed himself and began questioning her through Kieran. Levi's inquiries were all in point and reflected his professionalism. Iris was amazed whenever Kieran asked her the questions. This Neil Atkinson is a remarkable man. They the way he tackles a situation from a unique point of view is simply astounding. He's a business prodigy. My career can only flourish under the leadership of a brilliant man like him. This will be a great opportunity to polish and further enhance my talents. However, what Iris didn't know was that it was Levi who was coming up with the questions. She resolved all the queries one after the other in a calm and collected manner. She'd prepared herself thoroughly before attending this interview. She has considered Morris Group's future and laid out detailed plans to further advance the company in this industry. Levi thought Iris was indeed a capable person for the job. This is the type of talent I need in my company. Kieran, tell her she's hired. Levi said. Kieran hesitated. Then he whispered. Sir. There's another candidate who hasn't undergo the interview. Don't you wish to compare the candidates? That's not needed. She's the person I need to fill in the position. Ask the other candidate to apply for. Another executive position. Levi answered. Inside the meeting room. Kieran put on a dazzling smile. Congratulations, Ms. Annabelle. You are officially hired as the vice president of Morris Group. Please familiarize yourself with the work environment today. You can start working tomorrow once you're done handling the onboarding process with the HR department. This, the other executives inside the room were stunned. Even Iris was taken aback. I have the confidence to land this job. But to make this announcement right. Here right now is unexpected. Under normal circumstances, the executives will have to discuss and Come up with a decision for a matter as important as this. Moreover, there's another candidate that is waiting outside the room. Elena asked, what about the other candidate, Mr. Atkinson? Kieran smiled. Ms. Annabelle is the right person for this job. Ask the other candidate to apply for another position. Understood. Iris was astonished. She could not help but admire Kieran's decisiveness. He's a resolute yet eccentric man. Only great men can possess a personality like this. 
I've come to the right place. Iris walked up to Kieran, intending to discuss work-related matters. But Kieran responded in a friendly manner. I'll be frank, Ms. Annabelle. I'm just another employee of this corporation. The true owner of this company is another man. He was the one who interviewed you earlier. Shocked, Iris inquired about the company's owner and even requested to meet with him. You'll get the chance to meet him in the future. Back in Levi's office. Kieran wiped the cold sweat off his forehead. Isn't that decision too hasty, sir? Levi smiled. Not at all. That woman is bold and she can think outside the box. That kind of character is needed for a company's constant development. I scanned through the other candidate's resume, and his style is not what I'm looking for. Levi had already made the comparison in advance. Then he curled his lips and thought to himself. I'm guessing you never expected me to become your superior, am I right, Iris Annabelle? Iris handled her onboarding procedures at the HR department and toured around the company before exiting with a pile of documents in her hands. Unexpectedly, she was surprised to find Levi waiting for her at the entrance. Levi had just reached the entrance too. Iris sighed Levi confusedly. Then she took out more money from her purse and tossed the cash to Levi. After entering the car. Consider this the fee as well as your tips since you waited for me. Iris said. She had gotten used to the norm abroad where people would tip the waiters, valets, and cab drivers for their services. In Iris's opinion, Levi was the same standard as those people, perhaps even more inferior than them. The Protector Chapter 218 Levi took the cash and stashed the money into his wallet. Iris shook her head and sighed at that sight. He's willing to accept the money without any complaint. He really doesn't deserve Zoe anymore. Levi added. You're even tipping me? Did you strike gold earlier? Iris pointed at Morris Group. Do you know this place? Levi nodded. Of course. This place used to be Levi Group. Yes. Morris Group had acquired Garrison Group. This company's assets are worth more than 10 billion now so the prospect is something to behold. I am the newly hired vice president of Morris. Group. I do not prioritize the salary, but they are paying me 70 million annually. Iris explained to Levi as if that was an insignificant matter. I can earn this much money while I was abroad anyway. I applied for this job in Morris Group mainly to fulfill my dreams. Congratulations then. Levi grinned. He added to himself internally. I'm afraid you will never know. This. But I am your boss, I will be the one that get to decide the amount of your annual salary. Levi brought Iris back to Bayview Garden. She was stunned after taking a look at the house. You bought this? Iris asked with uncertainty. Oh, no. We rent this place. Levi answered. Ha ha ha, Iris laughed out loud. Don't you feel ashamed, Levi Garrison? You are asking Zoe to stay in a rental house with you? Let me guess, Zoe pays for the rent too. There's no way Levi can afford to pay the monthly rent for this place. A luxurious house like this costs at least 10000 a month to rent. Levi nodded. Yes. Zoe is paying the rent. If I married a man like you, I would have divorced you without any hesitation. You are just a burden to Zoe. Iris glared at Levi. Don't you dare spew nonsense about love in front of me. If you do love Zoe, you should leave her with her best interest in your heart. Levi sneered. You're underestimating me too much, woman. Believe me when I say this. I'm the one. That gave you and Zoe everything you have. Pfft. Iris rolled her eyes at Levi. Ridiculous. He's outrageous. The only improvement I can see in him. Is his ability to talk big shamelessly. 
I don't mind marrying you if what you said is the truth. Iris trembled with rage. Remember what you just said. Do not regret your decision in the future. Levi beamed at her. Iris was about to lose her mind when she saw Levi sizing her up. He's a scumbag. She went into the guest room and slammed the door behind her, reluctant to see Levi's face for a second longer. In the afternoon, Zoe returned home earlier than expected. Let's go out and celebrate your return to the country, Iris. Zoe was very excited. Sure. It's my treat today since I got the job. Iris said with a smile. That's great. Zoe was genuinely happy for her best friend. There will be plenty of opportunities for us to collaborate in the future, Zoe. I'll definitely help you. Out with the investments. Let's go and have our meal. Iris said to Zoe straightforwardly when she saw Levi coming out from his room. I need to talk to you. About an unpleasant matter. Zoe was confounded. What do you mean? You should divorce Levi. Iris added. I believe your parents and relatives will agree with me for you. To split up with him. What? Divorce. The Protector Chapter 219. A Porsche 911, worth over a million, was parked outside the house when they arrived at the entrance. My car is here. Iris opened the car door and entered the driver's seat. She had purchased everything she needed before her return to the country. One of the cars she bought was this Porsche 911, while the house she acquired was next to Levi and Zoe in Bayview Garden. Get in, Zoe. Iris shouted. Zoe hesitated. There are only two seats available in this sports car. What about Levi? Humph. Let him take a cab. Do not drive there, Levi Garrison. The place we are going to does not allow any car below one million to enter. Iris reminded Levi sternly. I am going to show him the difference between our standards right here and now. He should just take a cab there instead of sticking out like a sore thumb at that high-end restaurant for driving a cheap car. In the end, Zoe joined Iris in her car while Levi took a cab to their destination. Royale Club restaurant was located in a secluded place. The restaurant accepted only customers with advanced booking. Any customer who wished to dine in must register as a member by paying a two million registration fee. Besides, they had to book a table a week, or even a month earlier. The reason behind the hassle was the expensive ingredients that required advanced preparation. The Royale Club restaurant was part of Leo Rogers's business. The place was nominally run by the Rogers family, but Levi was the actual owner. Numerous luxurious cars were parked outside the restaurant. Even Iris's Porsche 911 did not seem significant among the expensive cars. She jeered at Levi. Do you see this, Levi Garrison? Zoe and I are people who deserve such lavish lifestyle. You don't have a thing you can provide for Zoe. You are just an embarrassment and a burden to her. Levi ignored her. Iris showed her member card to enter the restaurant, but her card was merely an entry-level silver card. She waved the member card in her hand. Do you see this card? I have to pay two million a year just to qualify as the lowest ranking member in this restaurant. Iris glanced at Zoe. I'm sorry to say this in front of you, Zoe, but Levi Garrison will never get the chance to step into this place without us. Zoe was caught in a difficult position. But she could do nothing about Iris's blatant personality. Welcome. For some unknown reasons, every staff inside the restaurant was looking at the trio apprehensively with respect and even fear. Iris did not know what was going on either. What's with these people? Am I that scary looking? Little did she know, they were actually wary of Levi's presence. Every member of the Rogers family was afraid of Levi more than anyone else. The manager of Royale Club Restaurant, Alger Palmer, 
immediately rushed over to greet them. Esteemed Mr. Garrison, Ms. Annabelle, and Ms. Lopez, welcome. All the other waiters and waitresses raised their voices at once. Welcome to Royal Club Restaurant. Then Alger shouted. Clear the tables. Ask all the other patrons to leave right away. Our restaurant will only serve Mr. Garrison and his guests tonight. Soon, Levi, Zoe, and Iris were the only patrons left. Zoe and Iris were in disbelief as they witnessed that scene. What? What's happening? Are they chasing all the other patrons away because of me? But I am only a silver member here. I believe there were other gold, platinum, and diamond-ranked patrons dining here earlier. In the end, Levi and the ladies were arranged to sit in the best spot inside the restaurant. Iris was confused. This seat is only open for diamond card members, and that's equivalent to spending 50 million in this place every year. My card obviously does not fulfill that requirement. The Protector Chapter 220 Why am I allowed to sit here when I am only a silver card? Member? Something's wrong. There must be something going on here. I've sensed the bizarre atmosphere since we walked through the door earlier. Are you satisfied with our services, Mr. Garrison and esteemed guests? Alger sought out their opinions while looking at Levi, naturally. Levi replied with a smile. It's acceptable. Zoe was anxious while Iris said coldly. What are you talking about, Levi Garrison? You're not qualified to voice out your opinion in a place like this. Clarity washed over Alger Palmer instantaneously. These two ladies must not be aware of Levi Garrison's identity. He quickly smoothed things over. Please calm down, Ms. Annabelle. We accept every feedback given by our patrons. You can even give us suggestions as to how we can improve our services. We will try our best to please Mr. Garrison. Leo Rogers's words rang beside Alger's ears as he shuddered fearfully. You will suffer greatly if anyone inside the restaurant displeases Levi. Garrison. Maintaining Levi's good mood was the utmost priority for every staff in Royal Club restaurant at that moment. Alger bowed deeply while asking for Levi's opinion. Do you have any suggestion for us, Mr. Garrison? I do have one suggestion. Hurry up and serve the dishes. I am famished. Levi said impatiently. Alger waved his hand at once. Hurry up and serve the dishes. Bring out all the best dishes we have in the restaurant. Immediately. That's the spirit. Alger was visibly excited to receive a compliment from Levi. He took out a handkerchief to clean Levi's leather shoes after. Noticing some stain. There is some dirt on your shoes, Mr. Garrison. Let me wipe up the stain for you. Zoe and Iris widened their eyes incredulously. They stare in horror as Alger crouched down to clean Levi's. Shoes. Oh my god. What's going on? They were aware of Alger's elevated status as the manager of Royal Club Restaurant. Most wealthy people had to pay their respect to him because the restaurant was part of the Rogers family's business, after all. So what is he doing, cleaning Levi's shoes in front of us? Who is Levi, actually? This is unbelievable. The entire table was swiftly FLLED with freshly prepared dishes. After Zoe and Iris recovered from their momentary days, Iris was shocked when she saw the dishes served on the table. These are not what I ordered. All these dishes are the most expensive items on the menu because of the rarity of the ingredients. This meal alone will cost me over 200,000. Iris smiled awkwardly. Is there an error with the kitchen? These are not the dishes I ordered. Alger answered with a courteous smile. Please be rest. Assured, 
Ms. Annabel and Ms. Lopez. This meal is completely free of charge. All of you have the right to dine in here anytime. Without any booking and payment. Iris was bewildered. This, this. But manager, I am only a silver card member. That's all right. All of you can enjoy more benefits than those. Entitled to diamond card members. Alger added. Iris and Zoe were caught in perplexity. They gazed at Levi. Who was stuffing his face with the luscious foods at the moment. It seems like he's the crux of all that's happening. Iris could not contain her curiosity. Who are you, Levi? Garrison? We seem to be receiving all these extraordinary treatments because of you. Levi responded without even looking at her. You're right. It is. Because of me. Then who are you? Iris gulped as anxiety crept into her heart. Zoe tensed up as well. Levi wiped his mouth and answered. I am the owner of this. Restaurant. So it's only natural that I can enjoy everything here. As I like. Silence FLLED the air after Levi spoke. The Protector Chapter 221 Zoe and Iris were petrified. They were slightly convinced by Levi's statement at that moment. This is the only logical explanation. Firstly, they chased all the other patrons away. Upon our arrival, then they served all their finest dishes to us for free, not to forget, the manager of this restaurant actually cleaned Levi's shoes for him. Iris's phone rang all of a sudden. Her lips curved upward after. She looked at the screen. I asked a friend to investigate this. Restaurant's information after sensing the odd atmosphere. And. I've received the reply now. Leo Rogers is the single owner of. Royale Club Restaurant. Ha ha ha. How dare you tell us this restaurant belongs to you. Levi Garrison. Iris questioned him. That's right. Is there a problem? Levi admitted. Magnanimously. Iris glowered at him and handed her phone to Zoe. All the colors drained from Zoe's face after reading the message. We were both astounded by Levi's statement earlier. We really thought he's the owner of this restaurant. Zoe smiled. Please don't mind him, Iris. Levi likes to joke. Around. Iris sneered. I realized that earlier. He's full of big talks. Can. You show us your business license, Mr. Palmer. Iris was a meticulous person. She wanted to expose Levi's lie. With evidence. Alger had no other choice but to show her the business. License. Iris slammed the business license in front of Levi. Look. Intently at this. Do you see who's the owner of this restaurant? This place belongs to Leo Rogers. Do you see your name? Anywhere on this license? Alger retorted internally. He could have the entire Rogers family. With a single word. Iris chided at Levi's silence. Please think before you speak in. The future, especially when you're in public spaces. Please do. Not bring shame to Zoe's good name. Zoe was still puzzled by everything that had happened. She whispered at her best friend. What's going on, Iris? Why are we receiving this kind of ultra-luxurious treatment? Iris frowned. The only explanation I can think of is because of my status as Morris Group's vice president. Most people already know that Mr. Atkinson purchased Levi Group and Garrison Group from the Rogers family. I suppose the Rogers family is treating Mr. Atkinson like a VVIP now. So it is logical for me, his vice president, to receive similar treatments too. Zoe was amazed. Mr. Atkinson is so impressive. But I guess this is not a surprise. Someone who have the capabilities to deal with the Rogers family must be a distinguished man. 
Iris smirked. Let me tell you a secret, Zoe. Neil Atkinson is actually just an employee. Zoe was taken aback. She asked in disbelief. Are you telling me there's someone else who's in control of Morris Group? Iris nodded. That's right. I only knew about this after Neil. Atkinson informed me that it was actually the real owner of Morris Group who interviewed me virtually. He's indeed a formidable man. He outshines all the other exceptional men. I've met in my felt in terms of his thought process and his vision of the company's prospects. It is not an exaggeration to say that I'm his fan now. Admiration glinted in Iris's eyes as she described Levi's abilities. She was truly captivated by Levi's competency that day. Levi, who was enjoying his lobsters at the side, smiled. I did not expect Iris Annabelle to become my fan now. Really? Then I suppose he's someone that's old with a lot of experiences. Zoe asked curiously. That's not it. Mr. Atkinson told me he's a young man, about the same age as your Levi Garrison. The Protector Chapter 222 Iris looked at Levi and lamented. They are about the same age, but why are there such a big difference between them? Zoe defended Levi Levi is still a capable person. You should give him a few chances to prove himself. Iris turned her head to the other side, not wanting to look at it him anymore. Morris Group is hiring at the moment, but he's clearly not a good foot. He's only suitable for positions such as cleaners and security guards. Iris was implying Levi's status to be equivalent to trash. Zoe smiled. I suppose you're eager to meet with this mysterious boss, Iris. Iris responded with heightened anticipation. Mr. Atkinson told me I would meet with him soon. I can guarantee he is an influential figure in Northampton. I am so lucky to be able to work with him. After that, Iris shifted the topic of conversation. Zoe, I really recommend you to FLE a divorce with Levi as soon as possible. You are progressing so well now in your career. In contrast, Levi is worsening by the day. With the way things are moving, Levi will propose a divorce sooner or later. So you might as well do it now. I can introduce better candidates to you. All of these men are elites in their respective felds, and are more accomplished than Levi ever was or will be. Zoe rejected with a smile. I know you have my best interest in your heart, Iris. But I will only be with Levi for the rest of my life. Iris sighed. She knew how stubborn Zoe could be. Perhaps I should target Levi instead. I will force him to leave Zoe. Iris ditched Levi and sent Zoe back to the house after dinner. Soon after the ladies left, a group of people surrounded Levi. Leo Rogers and his men had arrived. Should I send you back? In person? Mr. Garrison. Leo asked. That's not needed. I will go back on my own. Levi lit a cigarette and disappeared into the night. He decided to return to the house on foot because he wanted to contemplate his strategy to deal with the Northampton Chamber of Commerce. This Chamber of Commerce is a long-standing organization in Northampton, after all. This organization's downfall will affect the economic growth of Northampton, as well as other sectors. A lot of people will become jobless by that time. That is not an outcome I desire. I cannot manipulate Northampton's development to full flow my self-share wishes. The best way to handle this situation is to FRST. Expand Morris Group to the extent of being able to replace the Chamber of Commerce's position. Then I can corner them with fewer concerns. At that moment, 
a Maybach that cost over 10 million was parked beside the road, with its turn signal flashing. Something bad had happened evidently. A girl's cry for help was heard, but her words were not distinguishable as she mumbled in a panic-stricken manner. Upon arriving at the scene, Levi saw an aged man suffering from cardiac arrest in the back seat. He deduced that man to be a chronic heart disease patient judging from the medications next to him. His condition is severe. I can save your grandfather. Move aside. Levi said. The girl did as Levi said. She moved aside to let Levi help with her grandfather's condition. Levi has the necessary skills befting that of a professional doctor. He was involved in medical-related business six years ago and had polished his skills on the Batlefeld. It was a common thing for him to operate on the injured soldiers in the war zone. So he had the CONF Denke to save that aged man. What are you doing? Stop immediately! Someone shouted. Angrily. Levi turned around and saw over a hundred men standing. Behind him. They were the aged man's bodyguards. The bodyguards were about to seize Levi because they thought he was harming the aged man. I am rescuing him. Move aside. Levi ordered harshly. The bodyguard's leader warned Levi. We have a professional medical team. You are not needed here. So you better stop what you're doing. The Protector Chapter 223 Haha, <laughs> you call yourselves bodyguard with those slow movements? These medications will not work on him anymore. Now that he's ten minutes into cardiac arrest, in a few more minutes' time, he'll be gone forever. Levi explained with a smile. The bodyguard's faces fell after listening to Levi. There are eight more minutes before the medical team is here by taking the helicopter. The girl grasped the severity of the situation. That's right. They. Medication is no longer effective. Grandfather requires. Immediate medical attention. Levi added. He's experiencing a cardiac arrest. Do as you. Wish and wait all you want then. The girl begged Levi. Please save my grandfather, mister. All right. Step aside. Let me try and help him. Levi agreed. Because it was a life and death situation. The bodyguards could only stand and watch. Levi had no other choice but to use his hands to perform the resuscitation procedures since there wasn't any medical equipment around. He pressed the aged man's chest. Repeatedly. A helicopter landed three minutes later. A dozen doctors hurried over with a team of helpers behind. The staggering number reflected the old man's status. The doctor leading the group of people mumbled to himself. Remorsefully. We're late. It's over ten minutes now. His heart. Must have stopped beating. The other doctors following him were nervous as well. If he's. Gone, we will follow him to his grave too. He's too important. That man is the wealthiest person in Northampton, Mr. Winston Gonzalez. The doctors shoved aside the bodyguards who were rooted to. Their spots dumbfoundedly and arrived at the side of the Maybach. Your finale here, Dr. Woodward. Grandfather entered. Into a cardiac arrest state for a long while now. The girl. Scolded. Dr. Woodward grumbled internally. Shit. But when he saw Levi performing the resuscitation procedure. He was stunned. What's this? What is he doing? The group of doctors were horrified. He said he could save Mr. Gonzalez. The leader of the bodyguards said. What? That's nonsense. This is ridiculous. Dr. Woodward. Shouted. This stranger's interference took away every last bit of. Hope we have to rescue Mr. Gonzalez. He must be dead now. 
That means we're all goners too. Dr. Woodward chided. Were you all born yesterday? Why? Didn't you stop him? The bodyguards lowered their heads in silence. Cough, cough. At that moment, they heard a series of coughing amidst the commotion. Everyone bore witness at the miraculous scene as Winston. Gonzalez, who was experiencing cardiac arrest mere moments ago, straightened himself in a seated position. Levi got out of the car and fed Winston the medications. The medications were now effective as his heart was now pumping. Winston Gonzalez was no longer coughing or experiencing shortness of breath after taking the medications. Everyone was astounded by that amazing sight. Levi glanced at the doctors and said, You can now bring him to the hospital to monitor his condition. There shouldn't be any problem now. Winston grasped Levi's hands and expressed his gratitude. Thank you so much, young man. I would have died today if it wasn't for you. Levi beamed at him. You don't have to thank me. You should. Go to the hospital now to review your condition thoroughly. A few doctors came to bring Winston Gonzalez away on a stretcher. He reminded his granddaughter before entering the helicopter. Bring that young man to our house, Una. He is our family's savior. Lyndon Woodward wanted to talk to Levi as well. He was curious about the method Levi used to resurrect Winston. But when Una and Lyndon turned around, Levi was already gone. The Protector Chapter 224 Winston was pleased when he was informed of the turn of events. That young man has a commendable attitude. He must know I am rich after noticing all the luxurious cars and helicopters, yet he still left silently. I must reward him handsomely. I can turn him into a billionaire. If he comes from a poor family. If he is already a successful person, then I will bring him to greater heights in life. He will become a significant figure in Northampton. Everyone was impressed by Winston's announcement. He was the wealthiest person, after all. He was a godlike being, in everyone's opinion. He was someone who can alter another person's fate effortlessly. His connections with all the influential forces in Northampton surpassed even the Chamber of Commerce. Utilize all possible means to look for that young man. I want to know his identity by tomorrow. Winston ordered. That night, over 10,000 men were tracking down Levi's whereabouts. Una was FLLED with regrets. I forgot how he looks like because I was overwhelmed by fear at that time. Zoe and Iris were discussing their future plans when Levi arrived home. Iris said to him coldly as soon as he walked through the door. I will move into my new house tomorrow. I hope you can. Come help me. Do not worry because I will pay you. Zoe laughed awkwardly. What are you talking about, Iris? Levi. We'll help you if he's free. There's no need to pay him. Iris snorted. She thought to herself. Well, your husband already took my money earlier in the day. The next day, Iris went to work early in the morning. She left Levi to handle everything about her moving in. Levi had no other choice but to play along with Iris's request. Because of Zoe. Iris's house was spacious. She purchased brand new furniture. For her home. So the movers sent a few lorries of items to her. House. They gave Levi a set of uniform as well. Levi participated in the movers rank after he changed into the. Uniform. He carried the electrical appliances into the house under the. Blazing sun. At that moment an expensive Ferrari drove into Bayview Garden and came to a halt in front of Iris's house. A girl dressed in luxurious clothing got out of the car. She revealed her beautiful facial features after removing her 
sunglasses. Another woman dressed in a black professional suit got out of the passenger seat with a briefcase in her hand. Levi had met with the girl last night. She was the granddaughter of the wealthiest man in Northampton, Una Gonzalez, also known as the Princess of Northampton. Una was fond of playing the piano, so her family purchased three billion worth of insurance to protect her hands. She rushed forward to meet with Levi excitedly. It is you, Mr. Garrison. Una greeted him with a smile. All men from the Gonzalez family had failed to locate Levi last night. Just as the time limit given by Winston was about to run out, someone discovered him working together with the movers. Una hurried over immediately to express her gratitude. She was certain Levi worked for Ant's Movers Company as he was wearing the uniform. Levi stopped his work at hand and asked, What's the matter? He did not remember Una because he was focused on rescuing Winston last night. Do you remember what happened last night? You saved my grandfather. Una said. Oh. It's you. Why are you here? Levi asked. I am here to thank you, Mr. Garrison. You have my gratitude. For saving my grandfather. You're welcome. There's no need for you to come all the way. Just to thank me. Una shook her head. There is a need to thank you in person. Mr. Garrison. I shall fulfill all your wishes to express my gratitude. The Protector Chapter 225 Levi had to continue with his task of moving the furniture. So. He said impatiently. I don't need anything. A verbal gratitude. From you is more than sufficient. But Una was determined. No way. I have to do something. I don't need anything. Levi was frustrated. Let me tell you my grandfather's identity. The man you. Rescued last night is the wealthiest man in Northampton. Winston Gonzalez. I am his granddaughter, Una Gonzalez. I am. Currently working in Miracle Med Corporation, a company. Under Gonzalez Group. My company's assets are worth over. 10 billion. Levi was stunned after listening to Una's introduction. I see. So. I saved the wealthiest man in Northampton last night. No. Wonder that scene last night was so impressive. That. Helicopter arrived in just eight minutes while carrying an entire. Medical team. Una was satisfied with the outcome as she looked at Levi's. Dumbfounded expression. Everyone has always reacted in this. Manner whenever they found out about my identity. She looked at Levi proudly. Do you believe that I can full flow all your wishes now? Just tell me what you want, and I will make it a reality. Levi shook his head. Thanks but no thanks. Why don't I offer you a hundred million? Una suggested. Her assistant pulled out a check from her briefcase. Immediately. Una signed on the check and handed the paper to Levi. Magnanimously. Here you go. Levi grimaced. He stared at Una displeasingly. Is she trying to insult me? Does she think her behavior is acceptable just because her family is the wealthiest in Northampton? I've accumulated so much money in the last few years even ten trillion is insignificant to me. The wealthiest man in North Hampton is just a nobody in my opinion. Expressing your Gratitude by shoving a hundred million check to me is a form of insult. I am countless times richer than you, for God's sake. Una and her assistant exchanged glances when they saw the changes in Levi's expression. A similar thought flashed across their minds at that moment. He is a commoner, after all. He must be trying to ask for more now that he's aware of our status. A mere employee of a mover's company is seizing this 
golden opportunity to earn some big profit. Well, I can't blame him. This is human nature. How about 200 million then? Una sounded Levi out. Levi's expression was stone cold as before. Ha ha ha. Una almost laughed out loud. He's obviously not satisfied with that amount. She took a deep breath. What about a billion? That and my grandfather is inviting you to our house as a guest. You will be our family's guest of honor from now on. No one in North Hampton will dare to disrespect you. Levi said coldly. I'm sorry, but I am not interested in money. I do not lack money either. Then he turned and walked inside the house. Una and her assistant looked at one another. As expected of an average Joe, he's not satisfied with one billion. Judging from his attitude, he's probably going to ask for ten billion. They Gonzalez family can certainly afford ten billion, but I cannot make this decision on my own. I need to consult grandfather about this matter. They followed Levi into the house. An envelope was placed on the table near the door with Levi's name written on it. Una handed Levi the envelope after she entered the house. He did not notice the envelope previously. After he unsealed the envelope, Levi saw a stack of cash that's around a few thousand. Attached with it was a note, the fee for your hard work today. Levi slipped the money into his pocket and tossed the note away. Una and her assistant witnessed everything. The Protector Chapter 226 He worked so hard the whole day for that little amount of money. But he's not satisfied with one billion. He's too greedy. Una's impression toward Levi worsened. Instantaneously. I thought he was a kind-hearted and knowledgeable man for saving grandfather's life last night. But it seems to me he's just a greedy person with a terrible personality. He thinks he deserves ten billion because he saved someone when he can only earn a few thousand from a day's labor. But I cannot unleash my anger on him now because he did rescue grandfather last night. Una said with a smile. I'll get back to you after I discuss with my family, Mr. Garrison. Levi urged them. Please leave now. I don't need a single cent. From you, I'm not short of money anyway. Una left with her assistant afterward. We know Levi is playing. Hard to get. He's implying to us that he wants ten billion while. Rejecting our offers on the surface. There's no way he's sincere. About not needing this large amount of cash. Let's discuss this matter with Grandfather and the others. I did. Not expect him to be such a jerk. These poor people are the. Greediest as I expected. Una's face was contorted with rage. But little did they know that Levi could not care less about the. Money. A trillion meant nothing to him, much less a mere. Billion. Levi was infuriated by Una's sudden and unwelcome visit. He continued to focus on his work after they left. The Gonzales family house was the largest and most luxurious villa in Northampton. The Gonzales family members built a private hospital next to the villa because they were worried about Winston's health. The hospital was equipped with three helicopters and forty medical staff. Their services were exclusive only to the Gonzales family. Winston Gonzales was resting at that moment. He felt FNE after. He was brought back to the villa last night and his condition improved significantly compared to before. Winston was discussing Levi's miraculous techniques with Lyndon when Una returned to the villa. Winston asked in a hurry. Did you FND him, Una? I found him. He's working for Ants Movers Company. There's no need to investigate further. I have the pictures here. Una handed a few pictures to her grandfather and other family members. 
Levi was working diligently while wearing the company's uniform under the blazing sun in the photos. He's earning a few thousand from his current occupation. So. He's considered well of among the commoners. Una said. Winston questioned her immediately. What did you do? Did. You thank him? I told you to give him a hundred million, didn't. I. I did. But he rejected me. Una put on a long face. What? He rejected a hundred million? That young man has. Got a great personality. Winston was impressed by Levi. That's not the case, grandfather. He's simply too greedy. He. Rejected me even after I tried to offer him one billion. I suppose. He's planning to get ten billion from us after knowing your. Identity. Everyone gasped after listening to Una's explanation. Ten. Billion is a huge amount for an ordinary person working as a. Mover. Winston frowned. Did he say that out loud? Una described the incident in detail. Winston nodded after she was done. You're right. He is. Planning to get ten billion from us. What should we do, grandfather? I think it's a waste to offer. Ten billion to someone like him. Una said. The other family members were wearing a disdainful. Expression as well. That's right. I don't think he will stop at ten billion. He will keep. Asking for more because of your status as the wealthiest man. In Northampton. The Protector Chapter 227. Winston was surprised. But he did not give of this kind of vibe. Last night. Una shared her thoughts. I think this is his tactic of playing. Hard to get. He's trying to maximize the benefit he can get from. Us. That's right. He must have left the scene deliberately last night. After discerning our extraordinary status. He wanted us to. Locate him so he can get more money from us. Winston sighed. Ten billion is not a problem. But I do not think. He deserves this money. I'll look into his background in detail. Una was annoyed. Zoe's company was doing well recently. She even had plans. To sever all ties with the Lopez family and establish a new company. But the Lopez family saw through her actions despite how careful she was. Traitor. Aaron and his family are all traitors. Henry shouted. Angrily. Harry's expression darkened as well. Samuel and Melanie said at the same time. Grandpa, we already told you that Zoe does not care about you. Look at what she's planning to do now. She's cutting ties with the Lopez family. Does she have the guts to do so? I am still one of her company's shareholders. Harry roared. If she's planning to establish a new company, then she must have thought of a way to handle this issue, Grandpa. Samuel said. Fabian asked. Then what can we do? Zoe's company. Received a few hundred million of investments lately. I even. Heard Morris Group would be collaborating closely with her in. The future. That's the problem. We cannot stop her. She can give up. Imperial Meadows at any time with the capital she has. Currently. Grandpa's shares will not make any difference. Henry answered. Harry sighed as well. He could not think of any way to salvage the situation. Samuel voiced out all of a sudden. I have an idea, Grandpa. Harry and the others looked at him at once. What's the idea? Hurry up and tell us. Do you still remember my younger brother? The one that I wanted to introduce to Zoe in the past. Yes. Samuel smiled smugly. My brother is coming to North Hampton tomorrow. He's a brilliant hacker. He can hack into almost any company's system. My idea is to let my brother, Chris, 
to hack into Imperial Meadows's account and transfer all the money into Grandpa's account. You are one of the company's shareholders, so Zoe cannot take any legal action against you. Everyone contemplated the idea. Zoe will not be able to do anything after the money is transferred to Grandpa's account. She will not have the guts to sue us, much less Aaron and his wife. Harry pondered about it for a moment before he said. Yes. That's feasible. She cannot do anything by the time the money is transferred to my account. This is the same as before when I took the 100 million given to them by the Rogers family. They could not do a thing back then either. We must screw Aaron and his family over. They are too smug. Lately, I heard Aaron is announcing to everyone that he's buying a new house and a new car. Henry and the other members of the Lopez family were not pleased by Aaron's good fortune. They were looking forward to ruining the happy moment for Aaron and his family. Meanwhile, Zoe and her family were oblivious to the Lopez family's preparation. Aaron and Caitlin were celebrating the family's success every day while it lasted. The next day, Chris arrived at Northampton. Harry welcomed him in person and even treated him to extravagant meals. Then, they began to execute their plan. I'll need some information about the company, Chris said. Harry Lopez was one of Imperial Meadows's shareholders, so it was an easy task for him to obtain CLAS SIFT information about the company. The Protector Chapter 228 He could even lay his hands on some of the most confidential information about the company's account. All right. Leave it to me. Samuel and Chris left the house to carry out their plan in a secluded place. But the brothers were not the only ones at that place. There were three other people on their team. They began working inside an abandoned factory. Overnight, they were able to hack into Imperial Meadows. Limited system and accessed the company's account. Haha. <laughs> there is more than 630 FVE million in Imperial Meadows Limited's account. Samuel and Chris were astonished. I think Zoe Lopez did not have the time to utilize this money. Because she received the amount recently. Samuel said. Mischievously. Great. The money belongs to us now. Chris laughed. Suddenly. All the money within Imperial Meadows Limited's account was transferred away in less than FVE seconds. Chris and Samuel smiled smugly. I bet Harry Lopez and his family didn't see this coming. We did not transfer the money to Harry's account. Instead, we moved all the money into a joint account overseas that's under our names. We'll target the Lopez family now. Chris's eyes gleamed with excitement. Yes. Let's hurry. I returned to Northampton two months ago. For the sole purpose of collecting confidential financial information about the Lopez family. Samuel put on a pensive smile. The reason behind Samuel's return to the country was to steal the Lopez family's fortune. He had spent the last two months gaining Harry's trust and collecting crucial information on the family's financial status. A hacker's ability is limited without any information. So the best thing to do is to search for loopholes. In advance. I've waited so long for this to happen. Originally, I did not want to carry out my plans so soon, but all my effort will be for naught once Zoe cuts ties with the Lopez family and establish her own company. So this is the best time to take their possessions and fee. We will place the blame on the Lopez family. They can't possibly explain themselves after this. We've been lying to Melanie all this while with our fake rich overseas family background. There is 100 and FFTY million in Lopez Group's account. 
the rest of the branch company's assets add up to 60 million. They have a total of 20 million in their personal accounts. So we are looking at a sum of 230 million from the Lopez family. Chris and his team hacked into their accounts effortlessly. Click. All the money under the Lopez family's possession was transferred away the moment Chris pressed on the keyboard. Ha ha ha. We have 800 million now. This money is enough for us to live carefreely for the rest of our lives. Samuel and Chris hugged each other tightly. After that, Chris faked some bank account statements to convince Harry that the money was transferred to his account. They erased all traces of the other transactions as well by replacing them with fake figures. For a short while, the members of the Lopez family would still be able to see the balance in their bank accounts, but the money was, in fact, gone. Samuel and Chris would have already fed by the time they realized the truth. Moreover, they transferred the money to an overseas bank account registered under Harry Lopez's name. So Harry would become the scapegoat as the records of transactions would show that he transferred all the money to his account. But the money would have disappeared without a trace by that time. Samuel and his brother were able to fake their wealthy family background because they scammed over 10 million using that method in the last few years. You're doomed now. Lopez family. It's a pity that I didn't get to sleep with Zoe. Samuel lamented. The Protector Chapter 229 At that moment, Harry and the others were waiting anxiously for an update. A message was sent to Harry's personal number, we've successfully transferred all 630 FVE million from Imperial Meadows Limited. Harry deliberately checked his bank account and verified that it was true. Little did they know, Harry merely accessed a fake statement. Because the money was already in Chris and Samuel's possession. The brothers returned at midnight. Grandpa, I think you should inform Zoe and her family that you transferred the money away to save the trouble. They can't do anything to us if we do that. Samuel tricked Harry. Henry nodded in agreement. That's right. It will be troublesome for us if they contact the police after realizing they money is missing. Okay. I will go tomorrow. Harry agreed. Samuel and his brother exchanged a wicked smile. There's nothing to worry about now since we convinced Harry Lopez to admit his doing. This matter has got nothing to do with us from tomorrow onwards. The next day, Zoe was informed by the finance department of a bad news. When she arrived at the company, all their money in the company's account was gone. What? Zoe was dumbstruck. All the money is gone? There's nothing left in the company's account. Zoe nearly passed out from the shock. Stay calm, Ms. Lopez. Our technicians are looking into this matter. They said the money was transferred into a personal account. The person in charge of the finance department said. Zoe was puzzled. How is that possible? How can someone move the money inside the company's account? This can happen under two circumstances. The FRST possibility is that we are facing a very skilled hacker. The next possibility, is that an insider committed this embezzlement. They know the CLAS sift information about the company's account and are even knowledgeable of the Fruel password. Zoe said without any hesitation. Let's contact the police. Harry arrived with his family at that moment. Is there really a need to call the cops, Zoe? This is a family matter, after all. He said. Hey? What's going on, Grandpa? Zoe was confused. Harry put on a gentle smile. Zoe, 
I transferred all the money to my personal account because I am worried that you will not make sound judgments with the large amount of money received from the investments. Zoe stared at Harry incredulously. How can you do that? Grandpa? This money has got nothing to do with you. That's the investment capital I received from Morris Group. That's not right, Zoe. How can you say that? I gave Imperial Meadows Limited to your family in the past, and I am one of the shareholders. So at the end of the say, this company belongs to the Lopez family. That's right. What do you mean by that? Are you abandoning your family and betraying your ancestors? Melanie and Samuel placed the blame on Zoe. That's not what I meant, Grandpa. I am still a member of the Lopez family. Zoe's voice was shaky. Harry was infuriated. Let me be frank. I took the money away. We should stick together as a family and share this fortune if you are a member of the Lopez family. If you consider yourself otherwise, then feel free to call the cops on me. Harry left angrily with the others afterward. Zoe slumped onto the floor helplessly. Are they even my family? How dare he call himself my grandpa? How can they behave so unreasonably? Zoe had no other choice but to return home since she couldn't proceed with any project without any money in the company's account. Harry had informed Aaron and Caitlin in person as well. He acted overbearingly even when he took the money without consent as if Aaron and Zoe were at fault for not handing the money to him in the FRST place. Zoe and her mother held on to each other and cried their eyes out. The Protector Chapter 230 Why are we living such difficult life? We're both married to useless men. Levi already proved his incompetence, are you? Trying to match his pace too. Caitlin broke down in tears. Aaron retorted. I'm not incompetent. Don't compare me to Levi Garrison. Then why are you not taking any action when your father bullies us? He took over 600 million from us. Get the money back for our family. Why are you still here? Caitlin chided and pushed Aaron. Crack. Aaron smashed a glass on the floor. I want to do that too, but you know well of my father's personality. There's no way for us to get the money back at this point. Aaron yelled. Then call the cops on him. We have the evidence needed to take legal actions. Caitlin added. But that's my father. How can I call the cops on him? That's an unfleal act. How do you expect me to face my ancestors in the afterlife? Aaron was mad. Then what should we do? Are we letting go of this matter? Now. Let's think of a way. Aaron and Caitlin were clueless as to how they should. Proceed. I'll go look for Levi. He was Zoe's last and only hope. Meanwhile, the entire Lopez family was celebrating the joyous. Occasion. They were extremely pleased to have Fnali taught Aaron and his family a lesson as his family had been getting under their skin. Melanie said to Harry, Grandpa, this success is made possible because of my husband and his brother. Harry smiled. Don't worry. I will reward you handsomely. However, Samuel hurriedly added because he was worried. Harry would discover the empty bank account by attempting a transaction. There's no need to rush for the reward, Grandpa. Let's use the money only after this matter settles down. Let's leave the money alone for now. All right, Samuel. I'll listen to you. Let's distribute the money. Only after this matter settles down. Harry agreed. Grandpa, I'm accompanying Chris to visit his friend at South City. We'll be back in two days. 
you should stay by grandpa's. Sighed, Melanie. Help the family to counter Zoe and her family if they try to do anything foolish. Samuel suggested. Sure. Don't worry, dear. I'll be here while you're gone. Melanie smiled. After that, Samuel and Chris fed swiftly to a destination. Unknown to the others. The Lopez family, oblivious to the truth, was indulged in there. Fantasy of having 600 million in their possession. Harry grinned. The Lopez family is now sitting on near a billion. Worth of assets. We will focus on expanding our families. Businesses from now on. Levi was not furious when he learned of the news. Instead, he sensed the peculiarity at the turn of events. But that's impossible. Your grandfather shouldn't have the authority to transfer all the money away, even with his status as one of the shareholders. A transaction like that requires your approval as well as the finance department's consent. Clarity washed over Zoe after listening to Levi's reminder. That's right. It's not possible, not to mention I am the only person who knows the password. Levi smiled. There's only one possibility in this case. They hacked into the company's account and took the money. Illegally. Are you saying that Grandpa hired a hacker? Zoe asked. That's right. A hacker can easily hack into Imperial Meadows. Limited's account if your grandfather feeds the hacker with the information he knows. Levi nodded. But this doesn't make any sense. If Grandpa did hire a hacker to do the job, he didn't have to inform me of his doing. He admitted his crime for no apparent reason. Zoe was confounded. Levi stroked his chin. He was caught in perplexity as well. That's right. This is suspicious. Why did he tell you? The Protector Chapter 231 Let's do it this way. Why don't you go home FRST, and I'll get a friend to check it out. That way, we'll know what it's all about. Levi arrived at Azure Dragon's residence and found Phoenix. He delegated the job to Phoenix. Phoenix did not use his privileges, instead, he used his skill. And started searching. Sir, money from Imperial Meadows Limited's account had indeed been transferred elsewhere. Phoenix swiftly produced the results. Has it been transferred to the account that belongs to Harry or others from the Lopez family? Levi asked. No, it's an overseas account. Although it was done using Harry's name, it is now unlisted. There is no record and it's hard to check. I'll need some time. Hmm? I've found something new. Money from the Lopez group account and the personal accounts of all 17 of the Lopez family members, totaling 230 million, has been transferred to this overseas account. This happened. Within a minute of the time the money from Imperial Meadows Limited's account was transferred. Phoenix made another important discovery. What? Money from all the Lopez family members' accounts has been transferred. Levi asked. That's right. Exactly. Phoenix explained, the other party has created a fake account and a fake transaction history. It shows that the Money from Imperial Meadows Limited has been transferred to Harry. If they check their accounts now, it shows the money is still there but it's actually fake. There is no money in the account. Levi was shocked when he heard this. This person has scammed the whole Lopez family. Exactly. The Lopez family are under the impression that they Money from Imperial Meadows Limited has been transferred to them. But in actual fact, this amount as well as all the money from the Lopez family has been transferred out by this scammer. The Lopez family does not even realize it yet. Phoenix announced. 
Phoenix, trace this account. We must FND out where all the money has gone to. Levi instructed. Sir, be rest assured. It's true that the other party is skillful but now that their opponent is me, they'd certainly met their match. Phoenix said reassuringly. Meanwhile, someone from Imperial Meadows had made a police report. This was because there was evidence of Harry personally transferring the company's funds. Soon, the police arrived at Imperial Meadows. Zoe and Aaron were summoned with the others. All of them got a fright. Who made a report? Who reported to the police? Aaron. Asked. Neither Aaron or Zoe would have made the report because they already knew it was Harry's doing, that is, unless they decided to disown their father and grandfather. They had even issued a warning those who knew about the incident not to report to the police. However, evidently, someone had made the report. No, it's not us. None of us made the report. The staff were shaking their heads, for it was as they said, they did not make any report. Naturally, it was Samuel and his gang that had made the report. By doing so, they would put all the blame on Harry. After he had been charged, he would obediently surrender his position. The brothers had planned everything. At this time, they had also took down the fake account. The policeman said without any emotion, we have received an anonymous call reporting that Harry had transferred more than 630 FVE million of public funds. We have all the evidence we need. We heard that Harry had admitted to you all that he was the one that transferred the funds, is that true? The policeman asked. The staff nodded their heads. All right. We have witnesses and evidence. We shall go for Harry now. The policeman said. They brought Zoe, Aaron, and the others along. At the Lopez family home, everyone was talking and laughing. All of a sudden, the sound of police sirens were heard. A few policemen rushed in and held Harry down. They had with them a warrant for arrest. Harry Lopez, you are under arrest on suspicion of moving. Public funds, illegally hacking into the network, network theft. And other charges. Harry and the Lopez family were shocked to their cores. The Protector Chapter 232 They stared at Aaron and Zoe in disbelief, their FRST thought. Was that these two were the ones that had reported to the police. It was only mere moments ago when they had been discussing that Zoe and Aaron would not dare to make a police report. You, both of you have betrayed your ancestors. Arg. Suddenly, Aaron spat out a mouthful of blood. You two brainless morons. How could you do this to your father and grandfather? You are not foot to be members of the Lopez family. Your ancestors must feel so ashamed of you. The Lopez family rushed forward as if crazed. It seemed as if they would lynch the father and his daughter. No, it wasn't us. We did not report to the police. It's not us. Both Aaron and Zoe started to wail aloud. They felt wronged. Harry glared at them, do you two want to see me die? All right. You must be happy now that I'm going to rot in prison. Are you satisfied now? Grandpa, no, we didn't mean to. Zoe wept silently. Somebody, I want to check Harry's personal account to see if the money is there, the detachment leader, Captain Timothy. Lords from West Point ordered. Soon, the technical department sent a message, Captain, there is no money in Harry's account, not a single cent. Harry asked in shock, how can there be no money? The other members of the Lopez family were stunned as well. Harry's personal account originally had 10 million. What? There's no money in it. Isn't there supposed to be a transaction history? Timothy asked in shock. Captain, we just checked. 
the money was transferred out. Again. This time, it was transferred to an overseas account. The technical department reported back. What? Harry, did you actually transfer the money to an overseas account? Seems like you work fast. Harry was stunned, no, I did not. I don't even have an account overseas. Suddenly, he realized something and he let out a yell of dismay, oh no. It must have been Chris and Samuel who transferred the money. Everyone, quickly. Check your personal accounts and the company's account. Harry alerted everyone. Each of the members of the Lopez family checked their own personal bank accounts and the company's account, as well. Each one of them found out that their accounts had been emptied. In each one's account, there was not a single cent left. The company's account, too, had the same fate and was left with zero balance. It must be Chris and Samuel. Henry and Fabian reacted one after the other. Sean Lopez said, now I know why they'd left, they were running away. They even set up Grandpa to admit to transferring the funds so that Grandpa will be charged. Thud. Once Melanie realized the truth, she fainted on the spot. Harry slapped at his forehead in frustration, now, I know what happened. Samuel came back for two months in order to gain my trust. I was gullible enough to believe that the Lopez family's future could be entrusted to him and I made everything transparent for him. With his brother's hacking skills, it's as easy as pie to withdraw the money. I didn't expect this punk to set me up. Harry started seeing stars and nearly fainted. A curse at Samuel. Fabian was furious. The technical department checked all the accounts of the Lopez family. It was CONFERMED that the Lopez family's total of 230 million was also transferred to the overseas account. Timothy asked, can the money be retrieved? Quite impossible. Currently, the overseas account has been closed and the funds have disappeared. Everyone heard the conclusion given by the technical department. Thud. Flop. One after the other, the Lopez family members collapsed on the ground. All of their faces were as pale as death. Aaron and Zoe, too, had similar expressions on their faces. The funds cannot be retrieved. The Lopez family is doomed. The Protector Chapter 233 Sean Lopez quickly explained everything to the arresting officer. The prime suspects were Chris and Samuel. Timothy said solemnly, you can't just bring up two names. Chris and Samuel, and expect us to believe what you say. What we need is proof. Right now, we know that the funds of Imperial Meadows Limited were transferred by Harry. This is shown in the transaction history. All the other monies were also transferred by Harry. Our technical team has searched and discovered that the overseas bank account was opened by Harry. We have all the proof. Harry, what else can you say? Timothy asked coldly. Friends, just think. If it were really my grandpa, why would he tell Zoe and the others? Sean Lopez protested. Timothy sneered, that's because Harry wanted to blackmail Zoe with family ties. He is certain that due to their relationship, she and the others would not report to the police. That is the reason why he did so. This. Everyone was tongue-tied. What Timothy had said was exactly what the Lopez family had. Initially thought, too. Besides, our technical team has checked and we know that. No one by the name of Chris ever came to Northampton. There is no trace of him ever boarding a plane or a train. You guys are making it up, aren't you? Upon hearing this, everyone realized that all of this was planned way ahead. There was alibi to show that Chris was never here. 
Samuel and his brother are really too crafty. Take him away. Timothy Lords ordered. Harry could do nothing but to accept his fate. However, at this moment, Timothy Lords received a call from Xavier Fields. All right, I'll come back this very instant, he replied and left. Immediately with his men. Your case will be put on hold. I'll get to the bottom of this. This left the Lopez family totally bewildered. Harry was momentarily safe from being arrested and he immediately gave the instruction, quick, call the scoundrel and ask him what the hell is going on. Melanie dialed Samuel's number and unexpectedly, the call got through. Samuel, you beast, what have you done? The moment he picked up the call, Melanie started scolding him. What's the matter? Did that old fart, Harry, Fnally been arrested? Serve him right. The moment Samuel said this, everyone knew that he was the culprit. Samuel, where are you now? Return our money to us this instant. Melanie felt like blowing her top of. On the other end of the line, Samuel sound surprised, what? Money? I don't understand what you're saying. Melanie was so furious that she could cry, Samuel, stop. Pretending. You have transferred all the money out of the bank. Accounts of Zoe's company and all of the Lopez family. Members. How can you blame me for this? Wasn't the money from Zoe's company transferred out by your grandpa? This is documented in the transfer history. Furthermore, he admitted it himself. So, how could it have anything to do with me? Now that the money's gone, you should question Harry about it. Instead of me. Samuel sneered. You. Melanie was so exasperated that she almost smashed her. Phone on the four. All right then. Where are you now? When are you coming? Back. Melanie took control of her emotions and tried her best to. Speak calmly with Samuel. If Samuel returned, the problem could be solved easily. Me? Well, I'm overseas now. I'll return sometime later. It was noisy at Samuel's end. Boom. The piece of news was disastrous to the whole Lopez family. If he had escaped abroad, it would be very difficult to get him. Back. The Lopez family would have to face the current crisis on their own. Not only did they lost every cent, on top of that, Harry could go to jail. The consequences were unimaginable. Harry gestured to Melanie, hinting at her to try and trick Samuel into coming back. Melanie racked her brain, Samuel, I've not been feeling well. For the last couple of days, I am constantly feeling nauseous. You know that don't you? So hurry back and accompany me to go see the doctor. I think I'm pregnant. The Protector Chapter 234 Fabian, Henry and the others gave Samuel a thumbs up. Melanie was probably with child. Everybody knew this. No matter what, Samuel would certainly care about his own child. Fabian interjected, Samuel, Melanie is definitely pregnant. Why don't you take her for a full medical exam? After all, you're the father of the child and we wouldn't want to do anything rash. Haha, <laughs> Fabian, like hell I'll go. Don't you know what type of woman your daughter is? She's a slut. She has slept with numerous sons of bitches. So how can you pin the responsibility on me for her pregnancy? Nobody expected Samuel to rant in this manner. Melanie was angered upon hearing these words, Samuel, are you a man? How can you say such treacherous words? Samuel snorted, Ha, huh, Melanie, you are an immoral woman. You probably don't even know who the father of the child is. How dare you try to put this responsibility on me? Get lost. You. 
and your whole family are scoundrels. Beat it. With those words, Samuel hung up the phone. Everyone was surprised. No one had expected this. Melanie was so upset that she fainted on the spot. Fabian was seething with anger. The others quickly called Samuel's line but he had switched of his mobile. No one could get through. After a while, when they tried calling it again, the number was unregistered. What should we do now? Everyone was speechless. If they could not FND Samuel and his brother, they would never be able to recover even a single cent. Henry said in despair, just now, I asked my friends to check Samuel's identity. Everything about him is fake. He is an unregistered citizen and certainly not a wealthy man from overseas. When the rest heard this, they began to understand. Right from the very start, Samuel was here to cheat them of their wealth and Melanie was deceived in the process. He had deceived Melanie for more than a year, using her like a tool. On top of that, he had taken all of the Lopez family's wealth. However, the crux of the matter was that they had no evidence at all of his deception. Even the marriage certificate was fake. Their marriage was never registered. If they were to go by evidence, Samuel and Chris had never been with the Lopez family at all. The Lopez family had nothing to show that they existed. They had no proof at all. It can only be said that Samuel and his brother had committed the perfect crime. Originally, the two brothers had planned to deceive Zoe the same way they did with Melanie, but unexpectedly, Levi came back. Both Caitlin and Aaron were shocked. They recall that at the beginning they had considered a marriage between Zoe and Chris. With the new revelations, they now know that if Zoe had married Chris, not only would they have lost all their money, but Zoe would have been sexually taken advantage of as well. A trickle of blood appeared at the edge of Harry's lips as he anxiously asked, Is there any way of locating them? Even if we forego the money, these two bastards must be found. Exactly. If I see these two animals, I'll definitely slaughter them. Yes, I swear on my life, I'll slaughter these two animals. The Lopez family members had the same thoughts. They could lose the money, but they want revenge on Samuel and his brother by taking their lives. However, with the resources and manpower available to the Lopez family at this moment, it was too difficult to FND these two people. Furthermore, Harry was in a situation where he would get sent to jail at any time. Zoe had just sought the help of her best friend, Iris. Iris had replied that it would be very difficult, almost impossible, but she was still willing to give it a try. Zoe knew that this was a polite reply. This is an impossible task. Oh, who can solve this problem? God please, save the Lopez family. Harry wailed to the sky above. I can locate these two people. I can solve this problem. At that exact moment, a voice was heard. Without anybody noticing, Levi had already arrived at the Lopez family home. The Protector Chapter 235 You Henry sneered with disdain. Fabian was annoyed and he raised his voice angrily, a piece of trash like you can do nothing constructive but only destroy things. Harry followed suit and hurled insults at Levi, exactly. What are you doing here? How could the likes of you solve this? Problem? For goodness sake, don't come and make things worse. Melanie was even angrier, Levi, you trash. Are you gloating at the Lopez family's downfall and rubbing salt in our wound? Facing the onslaught of verbal attack from the Lopez family members, Levi replied with disdain, To be honest, I have nothing to do with the crisis your family is facing. 
I am only solving the problem for my wife's sake. When the time comes and I am able to retrieve the money, then, I dare you not to take even a single cent. Levi replied. Coldly. Harry sneered and gave him a look of disbelief, all right. If you can retrieve the money, we will not take a penny. Okay, when the time comes, don't you all regret it. Zoe, Dad, let's go. Levi left with the both of them. Levi is only here to gloat. His intention is only to rub salt in our wounds. How cruel. This piece of trash is no better than Samuel. If he can retrieve the money, I'll give him my head on a platter. Our family is really unfortunate. Not only did we meet a scammer and now we have to deal with this piece of trash. The Lopez family members lamented together. After leaving the Lopez family home, Zoe asked with uncertainty, Can you really do it? I can certainly try. Levi laughed. What can you do? Samuel and his brother are highly skilled. They left no trace. Even the police's technical team couldn't track them down, what makes you think you can? Who do you think you are? Aaron sneered. Caitlin spoke, Levi, don't you go and complicate matters. Don't mess it up any further. I hope you're happy now that Zoe has lost everything. You must feel that you're worthy of her now, right? The two said in unison, well, let me tell you right now, even though Zoe might have lost all her wealth, you are still an ex-convict and unworthy of her. Zoe, fearing that the situation would take a turn for the worse, hurriedly asked Levi to leave. Levi, please don't get involved in this. The police must have found something. Earlier, Grandpa was about to be taken away. But then he was released. So, presumably, they must have found some new information. Zoe elaborated. At that moment Levi had the urge to say, I was the one that asked Xavier Fields to let him go. By the way, another batch of Iris furniture has arrived. Why? Don't you go and help her with the move? I'll go to her to see if she can help me. And so, Levi donned the work clothes of the moving company. Again and continued to help Iris with her move. Meanwhile, at Villa Private Hospital in Northampton, the richest man, Winston Gonzalez was in the pink of health and he was feeling really great. After Levi saved his life, his health has been improving steadily. Grandpa, I've found out who this person really is he is Levi. Of Levi Group Corporation. Una said excitedly. It turns out to be him. It was apparent that Winston Gonzalez knew about Levi. He was after all, the famous dark horse from six years ago. They have all heard about him. That's right. His prison term of six years had just ended. He's currently working in Ants Movers Company and I saw him. Moving furniture today. Una said. Winston Gonzalez sighed and lamented, six years of prison. Life can destroy a gifted man. He is now willing to even work as a mover. Lyndon said, well, it seems the truth is that he is not willing. After meeting you, Mr. Gonzalez, he is not satisfied with one billion. He wants ten billion or even more. Now we finally understand why he wants ten billion. It's because he wants to make a fortune out of this incident. The Protector Chapter 236 One of the managers of Miracle Med Corporation said, Mr. Gonzalez, Ms. Gonzalez, I've crossed paths with Levi Garrison. Six years ago. That man is cunning and ruthless. He will do whatever it takes to achieve his goals. I'm afraid you're his target this time. That's right. Levi Garrison is a smart man. He will use some underhand tricks if we do not fulfill his wishes. Perhaps he will 
publicize his heroic act of saving your life and manipulate us into complying his every request. Everyone despised Levi at that point. He's simply abhorrent. Una hated Levi as well. She sneered. I've investigated his background, grandfather. Levi has been jobless since his release from prison. He's only relying on his wife to survive. Now, in my opinion, he's trying to scam a boatload of money from us this time. With that being said, the Lopez family is actually facing some tricky problems now. Una added. Her words piqued Winston's interest. Oh? What kind of trouble? The Lopez family will announce bankruptcy soon since nearly a billion was taken away from them as well as from Zoe. Lopez's company. Their head of the family, Harry Lopez, may be facing time in prison soon. Una explained. Winston's eyes gleamed. This is a brilliant opportunity. Una and the others gained revelation. Are you saying that we should return Levi's favor by helping the Lopez family through this crisis? Winston smiled. That's right. This is a wonderful idea. This way, we can stop Levi Garrison from harassing the Gonzalez family from now on. The others exclaimed. Winston reminded, You'll handle this, Una. I'll contact the related departments to exempt Harry Lopez from his imprisonment. I am going to meet with Levi in person after we settle this matter to clear things up once and for all. He saved my life, and now I am rescuing his family. This should be a sufficient repayment. Yes, Grandfather. I wonder what kind of trick can Levi pull this time. Una said proudly. Just as the Lopez family was at a loss, Captain Timothy. Lords from West Point Detachment contacted Harry and told him he did not have to face jail time because someone else was found to be involved in that issue. Tears of joy streamed down Harry's cheeks. A Rolls Royce stopped in front of the Lopez family house after a short while. Una visited with a few of her assistants. Let me introduce myself. I am Una Gonzalez from the Gonzalez family. Sean, Melanie and the other members of the Lopez family were shocked to their cores. The granddaughter of the wealthiest man in Northampton. They almost knelt in front of Una as their legs wobbled. I am here to help the Lopez family to weather through your current crisis. Please check because there should be money inside your bank accounts now. Everyone did as Una said in a hurry. And lo and behold, their money was indeed returned to them in full. They also found out that the Gonzalez family was behind Harry's exemption from imprisonment. You don't have to worry. This matter is water under the bridge. Now. Harry was tear-stricken. I only have one question for you, M.S. Gonzalez. Why are you helping us? Una smiled. The Gonzalez family was indebted to someone in. The Lopez family. We've returned the favor, so there's no need. To inquire further about the person's identity. You will have. Nothing to do with the Gonzalez family from now on. Una went to Imperial Meadows directly after leaving the Lopez family house to resolve their money crisis. Zoe and Aaron questioned Una's intention, but she merely gave them same answer she gave to the Lopez family. The Gonzalez family did not want Levi to boast of his achievements for saving Winston's life to prevent him from taking further advantage of the situation. So they did not reveal his identity as the person who helped them. Zoe contacted Levi just as he was done helping Iris with the move into her new house. What? The Lopez family's financial crisis is resolved. The Protector Chapter 237 Levi was surprised. Did Samuel and his brother gain some 
conscience, so they returned the money? I'll talk to you in detail later in the night. I need to get my work. Done for now. Zoe hung up the phone immediately afterward. Levi was about to remove his uniform when a few luxurious cars appeared before him. Una got out of the car, followed by Winston and over a hundred bodyguards surrounding them. Their arrival was so impressive to the extent of attracting attention from the other wealthy people staying inside Bayview. Garden. Nice to meet you, Levi Garrison. My name is Winston. Gonzalez. Winston took the initiative to greet Levi while glancing at his uniform. Seems like he is the worker of this mover's company. What's the matter? Are you looking for me? Levi frowned. Una said with a smile. We are here to inform you that we've repaid our debt toward you for saving my grandfather's life. A thought popped into Levi's mind. Did you resolve the Lopez? Family's crisis. That's right. Mr. Garrison is indeed a smart man. We have paid 860 FVE million in total to the Lopez family as well as Zoe Lopez's company. I've also exempted Harry Lopez from facing jail time. Winston elaborated. Una added, we've cleared out debt. So from now on, you can. Stop harassing the Gonzalez family since we'll have nothing to do with each other anymore. Winston said, Mr. Garrison, I am someone who does not like to be indebted to anyone. So I seized this opportunity to return your favor. Stop right there. Levi spoke just as Winston and the others were about to leave. Una and Winston stopped abruptly and exchanged glances with each other. He's indeed trying to scam us. He's a troublesome man to get rid of. Are you not satisfied with the amount of money we paid to your family, Mr. Garrison? Una could not help but feel disdain for Levi inwardly. You're an overly greedy man. Do you really desire ten billion that much? Levi shook his head. That's not it. I can settle this matter by myself, so why did you meddle into our family's business? Winston and the others were not pleased to listen to that. Remark from Levi. Levi Garrison is indeed behaving as we expected. His greediness knows no bounds, and he will do whatever it takes to attain his goal. He wanted to get ten billion from us, but we are trying to dismiss him with a mere one. Billion. So he's not satisfied with this outcome. Winston Gonzalez was a little mad. Are you trying to go overboard with your endless requests just because you saved my life previously? That's right, Levi Garrison. What are you trying to pull here? It is a fact that you rescued my grandfather, but we just saved the entire Lopez family. Will you be satisfied only when we provide you with ten billion or perhaps a hundred billion? Una expressed her stance frmly. Let me inform you now. There is no way that will ever happen. Indeed. Are you trying to coerce the Gonzalez family into fulfilling your greed because you saved Mr. Gonzalez? Well, as Una said, that's never going to happen. It is too late now for you to pull any more tricks because the Lopez family had already accepted our kindness. Winston said coldly, if I have seen through your personality. Back then, I wouldn't have allowed you to save me. Una lifted her chin proudly. Let me tell you now. My grandfather is a fortunate man. He would have survived even if you did not volunteer to save him that night. That's right. Mr. Gonzalez was FNE in the FRST place. You merely got lucky. We just did not expect you to scam us. Because of what happened. Levi was a loathsome being in everyone's opinion at that moment. Levi responded with a smile. 
you guys are taking this matter too seriously. Don't worry, I've already forgotten about that incident the other night. I don't need any reward, and I don't need nor lack any money. The Protector Chapter 238 Levi's words did not impress the others. What a hypocrite. He's telling us he doesn't want anything when he actually wants hundreds of billion from us. How dare he say he doesn't need money when he's just a lowly mover. He's a despicable hypocrite. Winston, Una and the rest of the crowd stared at Levi with contempt. He's not much better than a dung beetle in terms of his personality. You don't have to meddle in the Lopez family's matter. I will return the money to you. Levi said coldly. Winston and the others were stunned. Someone as greedy as him is offering to pay us back the money? Does he have eight hundred million with him? What a hilarious joke. Una said immediately, okay. So, you want to return the money? Then pay us the full amount right now. Winston added, let me witness your capabilities too, Mr. Garrison. They urged Levi to return the money on the spot. But Levi said, I will return you the money, but not now. So, please leave for the moment. Everyone sneered after listening to Levi's statement. That's hypocrisy at its finest. There's no way he can return eight hundred million to us. He's FLLED with empty talks. That's enough, Mr. Garrison. We'll be leaving now. You don't have to return the money. I am contented so long as you stop bothering my family and never scam another person by boasting about this incident. Una said to her grandfather. He can't do that now. There are so many people here to bear witness of our conversation. Then they left angrily. Levi Garrison was a man rotten to his core in their eyes. Levi knew they misunderstood him. The Gonzales family thinks. I'm trying to scam them after I saved that old man's life. Humph. Winston Gonzales? He's not someone that I care about. That. Money is insignificant to me as well. I did not want to pay them. Just now because I want Samuel and his brother to cough up. The money they've stolen FRST. Levi went to meet up with Phoenix after he changed his clothes. Sir, I've tracked down and froze the 800 million. Some. They did not have the time to spend any of the money. Yet. We will recover the money soon. Phoenix reported. Okay. What about Samuel and Chris? Have you located. Them. Levi asked. That was Azure Dragon's responsibility. Yes. They are still in Northampton. They are considered smart because they knew how easily they'll expose themselves in the airport and train station if they leave now. Azure Dragon answered. Let's go. I want to meet them in person. Levi said. Levi was astounded when he found out that Samuel and his Brother were hiding in the same village where Rowan Atkinson and his wife stayed previously. That action reflected the brother's wariness of their current situation. Samuel, Chris and three other people were playing poker. Inside a rent house. A message was sent to Samuel's phone at that moment. Samuel and Chris were horror-stricken after reading the message. All the money we've stolen has been frozen. This is bad. If they have the power to freeze our account, then they must have the abilities to track us down. We need to leave immediately. The FVE of them hurriedly packed their bags and left the house. But they stumbled into two people at the alleyway. It was Levi and Azure Dragon. It's you, Levi Garrison. Samuel was shocked. Levi smiled. Aren't you a brilliant man? Samuel Robertson. How did you FND us? Samuel was curious. 
Chris's eyes reddened with rage as he took out a knife from this pocket swiftly. Let's stop wasting time now, brother. We'll murder the Menfi right away. What do you say? Click click click. Samuel and the other three people withdrew their knives as well. They closed in on Levi and Azure Dragon slowly with the weapons in their hands. They were determined to kill Levi. The Protector Chapter 239 Go to Hell, Levi Garrison. You've been a thorn in my side for a long time now. A series of fast-paced footsteps was heard just as Samuel and the others rushed forward with knives in their hands. Over FFTY men appeared behind Samuel and his gang. The person leading the group was a pot-bellied and menacing man. He beat up Samuel and his friends effortlessly. Soon, all FVE of them were lying on the ground wailing in pain. The thugs walked up to Levi and addressed him. Simultaneously. Good day, Mr. Garrison. The group of men was none other than Tiger and his gang. They were aware of Levi's arrival as soon as he stepped foot into the neighborhood. Tiger saw Samuel and the others tried to harm Levi when he reached the scene, so he quickly taught them a lesson. In the end, Tiger sent Samuel and his accomplices to the police station. That village was under the West Point Prefecture, so Captain Timothy Lords handled Samuel and Chris. They come clean about their plan throughout the interrogation process. Samuel and Chris mentioned that the money they stole was frozen when questioned about that matter. Timothy's FRST thought was that the Gonzalez family was behind this because they helped to settle Harry Lopez's situation previously. The way I see it, the Gonzalez family really proved their capabilities this time. Not only did they locate the Robertson brothers, but they've also froze the bank account. The money was transferred to Timothy afterward, with a note telling him to return the money to the Gonzalez family. Timothy sent the money to the Gonzalez family house in person after he dealt with the necessary procedure. Members of the Gonzalez family were surprised to receive the money. They wondered if Levi Garrison was the person who returned them the money. But Timothy merely responded with a smile. This has got nothing to do with Levi Garrison. Everyone laughed. He's right. Levi does not have the ability to return the money. He's just a poor and pretentious man. Timothy went to the Lopez family house to explain the whole incident afterward. That's great news. Let them stay behind bars. Thank you so much, Captain Lords. Tears of joy streamed down Harry's cheeks. Timothy smiled. You don't have to thank me. Thank the Gonzalez family if you want. They're the ones that tracked down the money and the criminals. With that, the Gonzalez family thought Timothy Lords was the one that returned the money to them, while Timothy and the Lopez family thought the former resolved the matter. Everyone was happy with the outcome. Samuel and his accomplices were caught, and no money was lost. Iris hosted a banquet and invited Zoe's parents after she was done moving into her new house. First of all, congratulations, uncle and aunt, for resolving this crisis. Iris congratulated Aaron and Caitlin. They glared at Levi and said, didn't you mention that you would handle this matter, Levi? Yes. And I did. Levi replied. Enough with that nonsense. The Gonzalez family are the ones that settled this matter. They're the ones that found the culprits and recovered the money. You contributed nothing. How can you tell such blatant lies? Aaron and Caitlin could not stand Levi's habit of always wanting to show of. Levi was stunned. How did that happen? Oh, I think I know. What happened? Tiger and his men must have dropped Samuel. 
and his friends at the police station without saying anything. They fear the police the most, after all. That's why everyone thinks that the Gonzales family saved the day. Well, whatever. I could not care less about them. Zoe hurriedly smoothed things over. That's enough. Levi was just trying to console us. The Protector Chapter 240 Humph. Stop making all these big talks in the future. Aaron said angrily. Iris smiled. Levi has been helping me with the moving in process in the past two days. So he doesn't have the time to deal with any other things. Fine. Let's stop talking about him. Caitlin rolled her eyes at Levi. Harry sighed, say, who do you think the Gonzales family was indebted to in our family? Why did they help us to such extent? A thought popped into Zoe's mind. Could they be referring to the Lopez family from South City? I'm afraid they are the only ones capable of getting acquainted with the Gonzales family. Aaron and Caitlin were surprised by Zoe's reminder. The Lopez family in Northampton was merely a branch family. The original Lopez family came from South City, and they were a powerful clan. With that being said, plenty of people carried the Lopez surname all across Arudaya, similar to Harry and his family. So, they were not even slightly related to the Lopez family in South City. In their mind, only the powerful Lopez family from South City could be acquainted with the wealthiest man in North Hampton. All right, let's stop discussing this. Let's talk about you. Iris. I heard that you will be collaborating closely with Zoe from now on. Aaron looked at Iris. Iris beamed at him. We are planning something big at Morris Group currently. There will be plenty of chances to collaborate with Zoe by that time. What's the plan? Can you tell us? Zoe asked curiously. Admiration glinted in Iris's eyes. This is related to that mysterious boss of mine. His vision is really extraordinary. We will tackle the medical and technology felt soon, producing similar products as the Northampton Chamber of Commerce, in an effort to replace them in the market. Zoe shot Levi a complicated look as Iris elaborated. Iris, we all know the Northampton Chamber of Commerce has Levi Group's core technology in the medical and technology felt. How do you plan to produce the same products without that information? Zoe had to ask. Levi could have rebuilt his empire anytime he wants if he has Levi Group's core technology. Iris grinned. That's the reason why I am impressed by my boss's abilities. He knows all the data and information. Wow. That's crazy. Zoe was astonished. She glanced at Levi unwittingly. Levi had an eidetic memory, so he memorized all the information in his mind. But no one expected him to remember. Not even Zoe. The information would amount up to a few hundred thousand pages if printed out, so the feat to recall. Every piece of information seemed impossible to everyone. Iris was FLLED with excitement and anticipation. My boss is simply too mysterious and amazing. I assume he is still single. I will definitely pursue him if I meet with him. Zoe smiled. I know how domineering Iris can be, not to mention the stringent requirements needed by a man to meet her expectations. Iris has never fallen for anyone despite their relatively good accomplishments and rich family backgrounds. Perhaps she even raised her standards after meeting with so many outstanding people abroad in the last few years. I know how rare it is for her to be finally attracted to a man. Even I'm starting to wonder what kind of a person he is. 
Good luck. You will definitely achieve that with your qualifications, Zoe said. However, Levi butted in their conversation. That's not possible. You can stop dreaming now. He'll never be interested in you. What do you mean, Levi Garrison? Do you think you're my boss? Iris demanded. Levi nodded. Yes. I am your boss. The Protector Chapter 241 Iris narrowed her eyes at Levi. Stop looking at me. I will never be interested in you no matter how pretty you are. Levi said. Iris sneered. Fine, I'm not going to make any comment. You were the company's boss in the past. They did not take that seriously because they thought Levi was merely making a joke. In the days that followed, Zoe's career was progressing well. She was close to establishing a new company. At the same time, Iris had gotten used to working in Morris. Group. The FRST idea she proposed was for them to build a new factory. Although Levi Group had a factory, the size and production were too small. They needed to expand their production scale. If they wished to replace the Northampton Chamber of Commerce, Iris suggested for them to look for a new place to build the factory. Inside Morris Group, Kieran gave Iris a thumbs up. Your idea. Impressed the boss. He'll handle the venue and equipment. Needed to build the new factory, while you will handle the paperwork so that we can begin our production as soon as the factory is established. Okay. I understand. Iris was excited. I received a compliment. From my mysterious boss. Humph. How dare you say that the boss will never be interested in me, Levi Garrison? Look at how impressed he is with my performance. At that thought, Iris asked Kieran. When can I meet with the boss, Mr. Atkinson? Kieran smiled. Be patient. The boss will meet with you when he wants to. Anticipation FLLED Iris's chest. I am going to pursue him when that time comes. Levi had been working tirelessly in the last few days to deal with the venue and equipment needed for the new factory. He only had the time to meet with Zoe at night. Zoe was puzzled by Levi's packed schedule and when she questioned him about it, Levi only told her he found a job. Zoe felt glad upon hearing that. She was contented as long as Levi was working hard. The Northampton Chamber of Commerce kept track of Morris Group's plans. Humph. Do they think they can build a new factory as they like? I will make sure they won't be able to secure any place to build their factory. One of the council members of the North Hampton Chamber of Commerce, Ron Bale, spoke displeasingly. After searching for days, Morris Group finally found a new place. The place was originally a large scaled clothes factory, but was already abandoned for a long time. However, the size and the strategic location fitted Morris Group's standards to build a new pharmaceutical factory. The company paid a FFTY million deposit in advance. They would purchase the factory for 200 million by signing. A contract today. Levi went to sign the contract in person. The executives and upper management of Morris Group reached the venue before Levi and Azure Dragon. At the office, a lot of people were cramped inside. A middle-aged, nearly bald man was seated on a chair. The man exudes arrogance. He leaned on the back of the chair. While crossing his legs on the tabletop, he regarded everyone. Conceitedly while puffing on a cigarette. Behind him stood a dozen of muscular and menacing men. Elena introduced both parties. Mr. Garrison, this is the owner. Of this factory, Mr. Mason Pina. Levi nodded at Mason. Nice to meet you. I am Morris Groups. 
representative, here to sign the contract. But Mason merely shook his legs and puffed on his cigarette. All the while ignoring Levi. Levi stopped Azure Dragon as the latter was about to teach. Mason a lesson. We have to prioritize the contract. Levi said. Mason glanced at Levi disdainfully and tossed him an agreement. Sign it. One of the men standing behind Mason shouted just as Levi was about to fip through the agreement. You only need to sign on the contract. Why do you have to read through the content and waste our time waiting for you to finish? The Protector Chapter 242 That's right. We've already discussed everything. All you have to do now is to sign the papers. Why did you pay us the deposit if you are so cautious in the FRST place? Mason jeered. At Levi. Are you trying to force a deal? Levi asked. When did I do that? Mason sneered. Levi disregarded him and started to scan through the agreement. He grimaced after a short while and turned to ask Elena, what was the price we agreed upon yesterday? Elena answered, 200 million. We paid a deposit of FFTY million yesterday. Levi sneered. That's not right, Mr. Pina 200 million. Was the price we agreed upon after the discussion yesterday. Why did the FGUR become 2 billion on the agreement? Everyone gasped after listening to Levi's comment. They've marked up the price by 10 folds. The other executives were shocked after fipping through the agreement. They questioned Mason. What do you mean by this, Mr. Pina? Why is it 2 billion listed on the contract now? You better explain yourself. Mason glanced at the crowd nonchalantly. Explanation? Humph. I'll be frank with you guys. 200 million was the price for yesterday. This factory is worth 2 billion today. That's improper, Mr. Pina. How can you amend the agreement without mutual consent at the last minute? That's right. You are violating the contract. Elena and the others chided. Mason said with a smile. Is there a rule stating that I cannot amend the price? Over ten companies contacted me last night. Telling me they are interested in purchasing my factory. Someone even offered me three billion. So two billion is already considered a cheap price. That kind of situation was commonly seen on the business. Felt. A lot of businessmen would change their stance at the last minute because they regretted the offer they accepted. Last minute changes were either due to the businessmen's greediness or due to underhand tactics by competitors. Everyone looked at Levi to sort out his opinion. Levi beamed at Mason. In that case, return us the deposit. We will not be buying your factory now. It is not a difficult task to look for a similar factory like this. I do not have to concede. Under this kind of circumstance, Elena, who was in charge of the finance department, said. Please return the FFTY million deposit to us, Mr. Pina. Unexpectedly, Mason looked up and asked with a confused. Look. Deposit? I don't know what you're talking about. Elena explained patiently. We paid you FFTY million as a deposit yesterday after the discussion with your company. I even have the receipt here with me. Mason feigned ignorance. Did something like that happen? What's going on? Are you trying to play the fool? Elena was trembling with rage. I am not playing the fool. I really don't know anything about this. Look around and speak for yourself. Are the people who engaged in discussion with you yesterday here in this room? Mason asked. Elena glanced at her surroundings. They're not here. You got cheated by someone else. Our company went bankrupt a long time ago. 
they were merely the temporary workers for our factory. I think they stole our company's stamp and signed the receipt for you. They're the ones that scammed your money. So look for them if you want your deposit back. Because I have got nothing to do with this. Everyone was dumbfounded after listening to Mason. First, he changed the price from 200 million to 2 billion. Now, he's trying to scam our deposit. This is the FRST time we've seen someone as shameless and despicable as him after working in this field for so many years. However, Levi merely smiled. So, you do not plan to return us. The FFTY million right, Mason Pina. The Protector Chapter 243 Mason lowered his legs and straightened himself on the chair. He looked at Levi. What do you mean by that? I don't have the money with me, so why are you asking me to return the deposit to you? Everyone was infuriated by Mason's attitude. Leave right now if you do not want to sign the contract. You are all not welcome here in my office. Send them away. Mason ordered. The ten burly men stepped forward and they started to shove. Elena and the others toward the door. At the same time, over twenty men entered the room with baseball bats in their hands. Mason Pina has always been a thug. He had hired a group of gang members after earning some money through the clothing factory in the past. Not to mention, he was infamous around the area. Mason crippled a lot of his business competitors as well as partners. He did not spare their families from a similar fate too. So, many were fearful toward him. Morris Group was the only party that dared to approach him for a business opportunity. In actual fact, the factory was worth at most FFTY million. Mason was already committing a daylight robbery by asking for two hundred million, much less two billion. Get lost before we cripple every last one of you. The thugs began to threaten Elena and the other employees. They were frightened by the unprecedented situation because they have been mere office workers their entire lives. Only Levi and Azure Dragon remained rooted in their spots. Levi asked, I'll give you another opportunity to discuss this matter in a civilized manner, Mason Pina. Mason stood up and threatened, so, you're not going to leave, are you? Do you want me to break your limbs before you're willing to leave this place? He waved his hand. Men. Beat him up. Azure Dragon withdrew a gun from his waist just as the thugs were about to take action. He pointed the gun at Mason's head. Wait. Mason yelled. He slowly raised his hands. His body, which was now covered in a cold sweat, trembled fearfully as his legs wobbled. The other thugs looked at Mason astoundingly. They could not. Fathom Mason's hesitation. But clarity washed over them when they saw the gun in Azure. Dragon's hand. All of them were petrified. Tap tap tap. A series of hurried footsteps were heard in the hallway the next. Moment. Then a few muscular men with various skin complexion rushed. Into the office. They were the group of mercenaries led by James. Plop. 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 The thugs could not even defend themselves now that they're facing a group of professional fighters. Within a few seconds, they were left sprawling on the floor, covered in bruises. Mason and his men were dazed. Azure Dragon grinned. Weren't you acting all high and mighty? Why don't you put up that arrogant act once more? Mason was scared out of his wits as he reminded Azure. Dragon. Please be more careful with that gun in your hand. Sir. He was afraid that Azure Dragon would misfra and end his. Life right there and then. Boom. Azure Dragon lifted the slightly obese Mason single-handedly. And tossed him on the floor. 
Mason yelped painfully. Then he wailed in agony when Levi stepped on his legs. I saw you crossing your legs on the table earlier. Are you telling me to break them for you? Levi asked with a smile. No. No, Mason panted in pain. Levi sat on the desk and lit a cigarette. Then he questioned. Mason after taking a puff. Do you admit that you've received the FFTY million deposit from us? I, Mason hesitated. Levi stuffed the lit cigarette into Mason's mouth ruthlessly. Without saying a word. Arg, the latter screamed bloody murder. I admit. I admit. Mason shouted. The Protector Chapter. 244. Okay then, let me ask you, why has the price suddenly increased? And why did you deny us our deposit of 50 million? Who instructed you to do all these? Levi questioned. Mason shook his head and replied, None, it's all my own. Doing. There's no one else that's in on this. The corners of Levi's mouth curled into an unfathomable smile. As he waved at James, and said, I heard that you're an expert. At interrogating people, show me how you do it. Understood, Mr. Garrison. James stepped forward and fashed a devilish grin at Mason. Don't worry, it won't hurt at all. James opened a plastic bag which contained all sorts of knives. Just by looking at it was enough to make one's hair stand. James picked up a small boning knife and said with a smile. Mr. Garrison, I intend to use this knife to slice of his. Fender nails and toenails FRST. Upon hearing those words, Mason could already imagine the excruciating pain which would be inflicted on him. After that, I'll talk. Before James could complete his sentence, he was interrupted. By Mason Pina. I'll tell you everything. It's Ron Bale from the Northampton Chamber of Commerce who instructed me to do that. He told me not to sell this place to you at all costs. Not only that, but he also asked me to FND ways to take advantage of your company. Mason did not hold back any information and told Levi everything he knew. Very well, so it's the Northampton Chamber of Commerce. Levi FXED his gaze on Mason as he said, So, are you going to sell this building to me now? James, who was beside Levi, sniggered as he stared at Mason. Mason wiped of the beads of perspiration on his forehead and replied decisively, Yes. I'll sell it to your company for two hundred million. Did I say that that's the price that I'm going to pay? Levi asked. Hey? Isn't two hundred million the price we agreed upon? Mason was confused. Imitating Mason's tone, Levi said, Oh, the price can be changed any time. There are currently a few dozens of factory buildings for me to choose from. There's even one that is as cheap as ten million. I've made a careful assessment just now. I think this place is Worth at most FFTY million. I shall purchase this building at FFTY million then. In fact, Levi had offered a fair price. Previously, Mason had considered selling the building to another interested party who had proposed 30 million for it. I. Mason was at a loss for words. All he could feel was regret. A deep sense of immeasurable regret. If I did not listen to Ron and proceeded with the sale earlier on, I would have already received 200 million. Now look at what that plan has cost me, I can only settle for FFTY million. After both parties signed the sale and purchase agreement, the construction team which Iris had already engaged, started renovation works in the building. It was estimated that the works would take three days to complete. The next step would be to wait for the shipment of the equipment. Even though Mason was upset with how things had turned out, 
he had still managed to get FFTY million. That very day, Ron from the Northampton Chamber of Commerce rang Mason up. Mason Pina, what's wrong with you? You sold the building? And for just FFTY million? Are you an idiot or what? Ron lashed. Out the second Mason answered the phone. Ron Bale, who do you think you are? Who gave you the right? To tell me of? Let me tell you, you've caused me a huge loss. Don't let me see your face, or I'll definitely kill you. Mason hung up after saying that, without waiting for Ron's reply. Ron was so mad that he almost slammed his phone on the ground. Also present were three other members of the Northampton Chamber of Commerce, namely Zari Yount, Braylon, Stewart and Wilden Signs. They had grim expressions on their faces as well. We have to think of something to deal with Morris Group. Ron said frustratedly. Wilden smiled and said, I just received news that Morris Group had ordered a huge batch of equipment and apparatus from the Dynatic Medical Apparatus Company in the South City. Is there a way for us to interfere with that? Everyone asked. Of course. The owner of Dynatic Medical Apparatus Company happens to be my dormitory mate in college. Wilden had an insidious smile on his face as he said that. The Protector Chapter 245 Wilden gave a call to Wilder Prosser, the owner of Dynatic Medical Apparatus Company, on the spot. Wilder agreed to his old friend's request. As Dynatic had already signed the purchase order with Morris Group and had also received full payment for the goods, the only thing Wilder could do was to delay the shipment of the goods for as long as possible. It would create huge problems for Morris Group if the goods were late by a few months. According to the plan Levi and Iris had, the medical apparatus had to arrive within a week. That's great. Apart from that, we should also impose strict restrictions on all medical equipment and apparatus businesses to ban them from transacting with Morris Group. Ron and the other three men looked at each other with knowing smiles on their faces. Morris Group, you're just a greenhorn. Pitting yourself against the Northampton Chamber of Commerce is going to make your life really difficult. The men's cunning laughter resonated through the room. The Northampton Chamber of Commerce acted quickly and had issued prohibition notices to the relevant companies. There were not many companies which were engaged in the sale of medical apparatus in the FRST place. And limits had been imposed on all of those companies as well. Any company which attempted to sell equipment to Morris Group would be openly declaring itself as the enemy of the Northampton Chamber of Commerce. So it was only natural that no one would dare to take such a risk. Levi and his team had not realized that they were already in deep trouble. After all, the company had already finalized the purchase agreement with Dynatic. Meanwhile, Levi had been busy getting in touch with his former employees. Those who had previously worked under him were all in dire straits, as they had been blacklisted by the Northampton Chamber of Commerce, the Rogers family, as well as the Garrison family. As such, no matter how capable they were, it would still be impossible for them to gain employment. After more than 10 days of recruitment, 27 talents had returned to the company. Some of them were members from the private technical group, which Levi had set up previously. One of the members was Talia Stone, a top student whom Levi had previously scouted from the pharmaceutical university. She was one of the pillars of the technical team, and Levi was very glad to have her back. Talia was very excited to be back as well. Do you know where the others are now? Levi asked. Talia thought for a while before replying, Mr. Garrison, I only know the whereabouts of our team leader and the two assistant leaders, 
but I haven't heard from the rest of the team. Members The two assistant leaders, namely Tom and Charlie have both been headhunted by the Northampton Chamber of Commerce. I heard that they are doing really well now. Levi let out a sigh. When the technical team was FRST set up, for security reasons, the core technology was split into three, the team leader and the two assistant leaders each wielded one third of it. Logically speaking, the technology which the Northampton Chamber of Commerce currently had possession of, must have been obtained from the two assistant leaders. However, word had it that the Northampton Chamber of Commerce was already coming close to having the entire core technology. That would imply that the team leader, Isaiah, had also divulged his portion of the technology to them. How about Isaiah? Has he joined the Northampton Chamber of Commerce too? Levi asked. Talia shook her head and replied, No, our leader had remained loyal all the way. He would rather die than to betray the team. He remained FRM no matter what tactics the other party used on him, whether to tempt or force him into giving up the technology. He did not budge even when they broke his leg. From what I know, Mr. Wade had opened a small pharmacy and is just getting by. Thankfully, his pretty wife had stayed by his side throughout the entire ordeal. She even used up most of her savings to help him start the business. Levi got the address of Isaiah's pharmacy from Talia. Around half an hour later, he arrived at the pharmacy, which was in a small alley. Levi pushed open the door and was greeted by a middle-aged man, who approached him with a limp. Sir, are you looking for any medicine? The man asked. Levi recognized Isaiah at FRST glance, even though it seemed like he had aged 20 years. The man was only in his 30s, but had the appearance of someone in his 50s. Isaiah. It's me. Levi exclaimed. What? You. You're Mr. Garrison. Isaiah took a while to recognize Levi. He was overwhelmed with emotions as tears welled up in his eyes. The Protector Chapter 246 You've suffered greatly all these years, Isaiah. Levi glanced at Isaiah Wade's legs. Isaiah wiped the tears of his face. I'm Fne, Mr. Garrison. I'm so glad to see you again. Levi patted his shoulder. Don't worry, Isaiah. I am here too. Bring you back this time. At that moment, an annoying voice was heard. Why are you crying, you useless junk? Are you reminiscing your dead parents or something? A woman walked out from within the house swiftly after. She wore heavy makeup on her face and was dressed provocatively. Her eyelashes batted in a seductive manner. In addition to her fashionable appearance and mature, temperament, her body was voluptuous. Any ordinary man would have a hard time peeling their eyes of her. Levi glanced at her and saw that the woman was dressed in luxurious clothing. She wore Chanel clothes, carried an LV bag, paired with Ferragamo high heels. Strapped on her wrist was an Omega wristwatch worth over a hundred thousand. Levi could not imagine such a wealthy woman living inside that little pharmacy. But he had seen that woman before. She was Isaiah's wife, Sasha Lynch. Many of Isaiah's colleagues were jealous of him in the past. Because of Sasha's beauty, Isaiah treated his wife extremely well. He would always hand over all of his salaries to her, and would eat instant noodles by himself for a month in order to save up so that he could afford to treat his wife to an extravagant meal. Sasha eyed Levi dumbfoundedly for a few seconds. Levi. Garrison? Ha ha ha. Your ex-con boss is here to visit you, you. Useless junk. 
you pieces of trash finally have the chance to reunite. Sasha laughed uncontrollably. Isaiah grimaced. He hurriedly said to his wife, Honey, mind. Your words please. He's my boss. What do you mean by that, you useless junk? How dare you? Oppose me. Sasha screamed angrily. Isaiah was well known for being afraid of his wife. He immediately lowered his head. Know your place, Isaiah Wade. I am providing you your daily meals, accommodation, and clothes. Do not forget that I am the person who sponsored this pharmacy. So how dare you oppose you? Did you got tired of living? Sasha yelled. I'm sorry, honey. I will not repeat this mistake anymore. Isaiah apologized submissively. Levi felt chills spreading across his chest at that sight. This woman was obedient and polite when Isaiah was successful. She even cooked his lunch and sent the meals to his office. Every day back then. But look at her now. She's mistreating him now that he's down and out. The Protector Chapter 247 Sasha glanced at Levi and jeered at Isaiah. Why am I stuck? With a useless junk like you? You gave up a job that would pay. You 10 million annually for this ex-con in the past. Look at how well Tom Frazier and Charlie Reeds are doing. Now. They are receiving an annual salary of 20 million. Driving luxurious cars, and staying in expensive villas. What? About you? You are living in the dumps. Isaiah apologized again. Honey, this is all my fault. I am a piece of trash. But this has got nothing to do with Mr. Garrison. Humph. Both of you are pieces of shit. At that moment, a series of honks were heard from outside the pharmacy. A Mercedes worth over a million was parked outside the store. A man dressed in a suit got out of the car. He appeared to be an elite in the business world. What's taking you so long, Sasha? I've been waiting for half a day now. A man entered the pharmacy. The man was stunned when he saw Levi. He was none other than one of the traders who turned against Levi, Tom Frazier. He was the vice team leader, as well as the person who disclosed one third of the information related to Levi Group's core technology. Oh, I thought my eyes were playing tricks on me. But it is. You, the crippled Mr. Garrison. You're finally released from prison. I could have picked you up if you'd informed me earlier. Tom said cheerfully. He glanced at Isaiah's leg and jeered at Levi. You're a cripple. Mr. Garrison, and so is Isaiah. Are you guys preparing to form a team to participate in the Paralympics? Ha ha ha. That's right. They can be a team of cripples. Sasha. Could not contain her laughter. Levi said, Do you speak to your parents with that foul mouth? Of yours. Tom was displeased instantaneously. He pointed at Levi. I. Cannot say anything to you if you were the Levi Garrison from. Six years ago. But who are you to insult me now? Do you have. A death wish. Isaiah chided subconsciously, how dare you speak to Mr. Garrison with that tone. Do you think you are qualified to carry that attitude in front of him? Isaiah thought of Levi as his savior. So he would not allow anyone to criticize Levi. Oh? Are you an accomplished man now, Isaiah? Since when? Do you have the guts to defy me? Tom patted Isaiah's face. Isaiah shouted angrily as he unleashed the pent-up rage in his heart. You are not welcome here. This is my place, so get out. Now. The Protector Chapter 248 Tom laughed after listening to Isaiah. Are you hearing this? Sasha? 
Did he just say that this place is his? Sasha slapped Isaiah furiously. What's wrong with you? This is my place. You've got nothing to do with this store. Moreover, how dare you talk to Tom in that unfriendly tone? Isaiah covered his cheek incredulously. Did you just slap me? Because of him. That's right. I slapped you because of Tom. Tom is the only man I love. Sasha hugged Tom's arm and plastered her body to him intimately after she spoke. Tom held Sasha in his arm and deliberately grabbed her. Buttocks. Boom. Isaiah was dumbstruck by that sight. Witnessing his wife offering herself up to another man was an utter humiliation to a man. Tom chuckled smugly. Do you know why I'm here to pick Sasha up? That's because I'm bringing her to the hotel. Have you taken a look at what your wife is carrying in her bag? She's going to put on a fashion show for me while wearing clothes that you've never even seen. Tom took out a few sets of outfit from within Sasha's bag. Sasha acted coquettishly toward Tom. You're so mean. Isaiah felt blood rushing to his brain as his face contorted with rage. I must compliment your wife, Isaiah. She's so great in bed that I can't get enough of her even after six years. Tom kissed Sasha to prove his statement. Sasha laughed skittishly. You're amazing too, Tom. This useless junk here is nothing compared to you. I doubt his lower body is still functioning at this point. She glowered at Isaiah as she made the comment. Tom added, perhaps you're wondering why Sasha stayed by your side for so long? That's because she has yet to lay her hands on the information of the core technology in your possession. Otherwise, Sasha would have left you a long time ago. You're only needed because of those data. Other than that, you're completely useless. Sasha said disdainfully, that's right. Why would I sacrifice so much time staying by your side if not for the information? I have to admit, you are indeed a good secret keeper. I wasted six years with you, but never once had you divulged the complete information to me. Isaiah nearly experienced a cardiac arrest as he listened to those brazen words from the shameless couple. Everything's clear to me now. The reason why Sasha was reluctant to let me touch her body. In the last six years, the reason behind Tom's frequent visits to the pharmacy, the luxurious clothes, and the endless amount of money she has even though she's unemployed. I'm being cuckolded. More importantly, the man who wronged me is my own apprentice. I trained Tom and Charlie when they were young. They even addressed me as their master back then. I was moved by Sasha's dedication to staying with me even. Though she mistreated me all these years. Now I finally understand the reason behind all of these. The Protector Chapter 249 Isaiah had doubted Sasha since a long time ago, but his affection toward her caused him to place blind faith in his cheating wife. On the other hand, Levi Finale gained revelation as to how the Northampton Chamber of Commerce managed to get near-complete information on Levi Group's core technology. So it was Sasha that had tricked Isaiah into telling her all these years. Otherwise, He's not the type of person to divulge any of the information. Tom sized up Levi and sneered. What's the matter? Did you? FND a helper, Isaiah? Well, I'll be frank with you. Levi Garrison is just a man who's relying on his wife now. He's the same as you, a crippled, useless piece of junk. Sasha glared at her husband menacingly. Since we've told you everything, it's time for you to get lost, Isaiah Wade. This is my place, 
after all. Tom held Sasha closer in his arms. That's right. You're as good as a piece of trash now that your usefulness has come to an end. Did you know, Isaiah? I've bought two houses and two cars. With the salary you've given me in the past. You're just a poor loser now. Do you think you're qualified to stay as my man? Sasha jeered at Isaiah. Tom laughed. I'll let you in on another secret, Isaiah. I am not the only man who cuckolded you. Plenty of others in the North. Hampton Chamber of Commerce slept with your wife too. They even praised her for her outstanding techniques. I'll kill you. Isaiah rushed forward with reddened eyes and veins throbbing visibly on his forehead. Bam! Tom punched Isaiah easily and the latter fell backward. He was about to swing another punch, but Levi caught his wrist. Tom staggered backward after Levi exerted a little force to push him of. Levi's idea was to have Isaiah teach the shameless couple a lesson they would remember for the rest of their lives, which was the reason why he hadn't interfered until that moment. In the meantime, Sasha tossed a suitcase FLLED with Isaiah's belongings on the floor. Take your rubbish with you and get the hell out of here. Isaiah felt his heart wrenched with pain as he was chased out of the house mercilessly by his wife. I worked so hard in the past with the sole intention of providing Sasha with a comfortable life. Not only did she scam all my money and cheated on me, but she's also even chasing me away now. Isaiah stared at the shameless couple with malicious intent. His body was trembling with rage. Levi asked Isaiah, Do you want to surpass them, Isaiah? Do you want to render them speechless and make them look up to you? I do. Do you want that slut to grovel on the floor and repent? I do. Do you want that despicable man to kneel before you and beg for your forgiveness? I do. Will you accept my offer if I provide you with such an opportunity now? Levi asked. I will. Isaiah roared. I swear to accomplish great success. Even if I have to work my ass of. I will make these two. Shameless people pay for their sins. Isaiah steeled his resolution as the last shred of love he had for. Sasha vanished. Great. You are my employee from this moment onward. Levi. Announced. Ha ha ha, did you hear him, Tom? He wants us to pay the price. For our sins. Sasha laughed out loud. Tom leaned against the Mercedes and sneered. You're a fool, Isaiah. Are you expecting Levi Garrison to give you the chance to rise up? He can't even take care of himself now. Much less give you any kind of opportunity. What a joke. Sasha added. That's right. Don't you have a brain you can think with? Levi was recently released from prison. Do you still expect him to be Morris Group's boss? In your dreams. Isaiah narrowed his eyes and shrieked at them. I believe in Mr. Garrison. He will provide me with a platform to prosper. By that time, I swear to make you pay. Sure. We'll be waiting for you. You're such a hilarious. Brainless git, the two of them entered the car and left before. Isaiah's eyes. The Protector Chapter. 250. Tears came to Isaiah, a middle-aged man, as he sobbed. Uncontrollably and cried his heart out. The shameless couple's outrageous behavior drove Isaiah to. The brink of depression. He apologized. I've wronged you, Mr. Garrison. I've revealed. Almost everything I know of the core technology to that bitch. I'm really useless. Levi smiled. Don't worry about that, Isaiah. I foresaw that the Northampton Chamber of Commerce would lay their hands on the core technology. 
Isaiah was a smart man. After pondering for a while, he connected the pieces of information in his mind. Then he asked. Surprisingly, are you planning to FGHT against the North? Hampton Chamber of Commerce, Mr. Garrison. That's right. But Mr. Garrison. You're recently released from prison, how do you plan to FGHT against them? Levi said with a smile, I suppose you know about Levi Group's recent name-changing ceremony, Isaiah. The company is called Morris Group now. Isaiah's body shuddered greatly, listening to him. He widened his eyes incredulously. Are you by any chance the boss of Morris Group, Mr. Garrison. SHH. Let's keep a low profile. Levi gestured for him to keep quiet. Soon, a Rolls Royce Phantom swiftly came to a halt next to them. Let's go. Follow me to the company now. We'll use the shortest time possible to establish a technical team. We are going to regain our previous glory and make them regret. Levi said. Isaiah felt his blood boiling with anticipation. He agreed without a second thought. I've waited this day for so long. Tears of joy brimmed in his eyes. He had spent the last six years learning and following updates in the industry, maintaining and polishing his professional knowledge. Isaiah took out his phone and dialed Sasha's number. Sasha said to him mockingly after the call connected, What's the matter, you useless piece of crippled trash? Did you regret your decision, so you're calling me to beg me? Well, it's too late now. In my mind, you're no better than a stray dog. You should just get lost. Isaiah grimaced. This is the last time I'm calling you, Sasha. Lynch. I will make sure you regret what you've done. You will. Kneel before me and repent for your sins by that time. Don't. Worry because that day will come sooner than you think. Ha ha ha, you should consider a career as a comedian. How do. You plan to realize your big talks. Sasha and Tom's laughter was heard from the other end of the phone. Then, Tom pressed his body against Sasha. Should we FLM? Our intimate moment today and send that cripple the video. Hmm, you're so bad. Isaiah exploded with rage after listening to their interaction. Bam. Crack. He smashed his cell phone on the ground forcefully. Shame. This is the worst shame a man can experience. Isaiah and Levi were walking on the streets, discussing the company's future direction after visiting Morris Group. Tom and Sasha found Isaiah at that moment. Their disheveled clothes reflected the activity they were engaged in moments ago. Let's go and get a divorce. It's the right time for me to finale. Ditch you. Sasha jeered at Isaiah. I, Isaiah hesitated. Making that important decision at a moment's notice was challenging for him. His relationship with Sasha had lasted for a decade, after all. Tom immediately mocked him. What's the matter? You don't want to get a divorce? Do you plan to linger around Sasha in the future? Sasha pushed Isaiah. Get lost. You're no longer worthy of me. That's it. That's how easily you're disregarding our relationship that has lasted for so many years. Isaiah questioned her with a stern expression. Ha ha. You have the audacity to ask me that question? Let me be honest with you. I only stuck with you for ten years because I coveted your money. Sasha answered mercilessly. Isaiah was about to agree to her request to FLE for a divorce. When Levi stepped in. Divorce? In your dreams. The Protector Chapter 251. I will heed Mr. Garrison's advice. I will not divorce you. 
Sasha and Tom nearly passed out from anger. Fine. Just you wait. I'll force you to sign the papers if it's the last thing I do. The two of them left furiously afterward. Although Isaiah did not understand Levi's intention, he believed Levi to have his reasons. He swore to take revenge on Sasha and Tom from the moment he was chased out of the house. Soon after that fasco, Isaiah successfully entered Morris Group and headed the medical technology department. At the same time, Morris Group released a hiring announcement to recruit professionals in medical and technology-related fields with lucrative salaries. A lot of people put forth their best effort in an attempt to join Morris Group following the announcement. The news quickly reached Sasha's ears. Coincidentally, she was having a meal with Tom and Charlie. Humph. I can't believe Morris Group decided to hire that cripple. Sasha was not pleased. I expected him to live a pitiful life on the streets after I chased him out of the house. I certainly did not expect him to get a job so quickly. Tom was enraged too. Isaiah Wade's name is blacklisted by all the companies in Northampton. Morris Group's boldness to recruit him is unbelievable. Charlie said with a smile. Don't worry about it. He's not going to last in Morris Group. Sasha was confused. What do you mean? Well, Morris Group will cease to exist in Northampton soon. Isaiah will once again become a piece of trash by that time. Charlie sneered. Tom was more focused on the technical side of the business. So he was not informed of some insider information. He asked, is there something wrong with the company? Charlie. Morris Group has been provoking the Northampton Chamber of Commerce all this while. The councils of the chamber have begun to take action. Isaiah was brought over to Morris Group to aid in the production of pharmaceutics. But the equipment needed is no longer available in the market due to the Chamber of Commerce's influence. Just you wait. Isaiah will be living on the streets soon. Charlie laughed. Ha ha ha. This is awesome. Isaiah is destined to be a crippled loser. He's really a joke, thinking he's able to make us regret the things we've done. Tom said. Sasha was overjoyed as she listened to Charlie's predictions. At that moment, Charlie hugged Sasha and teased her. Tom said you're mine for tonight. You're a meanie, Charlie, Sasha leaned against Charlie's chest and acted coquettishly. Meanwhile, Isaiah immersed himself in his work. He had assembled the technical team too. Isaiah was a brilliant man. He fne tuned the previous core technology, allowing Morris Group to produce products with better quality and cheaper prices compared to the North. Hampton Chamber of Commerce. His efforts had pushed Morris Group one step forward in their goal of replacing the Northampton Chamber of Commerce. In just four days, Isaiah with the rest of the team had finalized the adjustments. After all, Isaiah had been ruminating on that matter in the last six years. They had made the necessary arrangements at the factory as well. So all that was left was to wait for the production to begin. Iris was holding a meeting when she looked at Doug Rice, the head of the procurement department, and said, Mr. Rice, what's going on with the equipment we ordered from Dynatic? The items were supposed to arrive in three days, it's been FVE days now. Doug wiped the nervous sweat of his face. Ms. Annabelle. Dynatic recently informed us they are repairing the equipment. We ordered from them due to an unforeseen issue. They told us. To wait. Iris retorted immediately. That's not possible. I checked the. Equipment in person previously. There's nothing wrong with. The machines. Are you saying that Dynatic is deliberately delaying the. 
shipment? Doug asked. Contact Dynatics owner, Mr. Wilder Prosser, for me. Iris questioned Wilder as soon as the call connected, Mr. Prosser, where is the equipment I ordered from you? About that, there's something wrong with the machines. Purchased by Morris Group. So you will have to wait. Wilder. Answered. For how long? At least a month. The Protector Chapter. 252. Everyone gasped after listening to Wilder's response. They are. Obviously doing this on purpose. Wilder added. I sent the machines back to the original. Manufacturer to undergo repair and services. Please be. Considerate since we already speed up the progress to a one. Month waiting time. Iris said, I'm going to your company to assess the situation in. Person. You can ship us the other stocks you're keeping. We. Are in a hurry, so we don't have the time to wait any longer. Oh no, I'm so sorry, Ms. Annabelle. I've sent out all my stocks. Because other parties purchased the equipment. Is that so? Iris kept her cool. She knew he was provoking her. On purpose. That's right. I can't believe this coincidence either. Out of all. The equipment I shipped out, only the ones ordered by Morris. Group are faulty. Wilder smiled cunningly. Everyone was infuriated by Wilder's tone. The delay is clearly intentional. We've prepared everything, and... Those equipment are the only element lacking now. Ms. Annabelle, I'm going to have to trouble you to wait for a... Little longer, Wilder said with a smile. I can't. You promised to send the machines here in three... Days. So what's the deal now? Iris was hopping mad. Wilder sighed. If that's the case, I do have another idea. What idea? Iris asked. You will have to top up more money. I can send you the backup stock from my personal storage. Wilder answered. How much are you asking for? You ordered the equipment for FV 100 million previously. If you give me FV billion now, I will send you the backup stock. Immediately. You should know that this equipment is my trump. Card. So the price that I'm suggesting is a very reasonable. One. He's outrageously greedy. All the executives in Morris Group. Were astounded. No one expected Wilder to pull of a scheme. Like that. Iris jeered at him. Do you take me for a fool, Wilder Prosser? Ha ha. We can call of this deal if you're reluctant. Wilder was. Determined. Fine. Then refund us the money. We're rescinding our order. From you. Iris chided. Sure. I will return the money to you. But I'll be honest with. You, you will regret your decision because I am the only person. Who has the equipment you're looking for. I'll be waiting for Morris Group to beg me later on. Iris began looking for another supplier after Wilder refunded the money. She contacted all the medical equipment suppliers in Northampton and cities nearby, but none of them was willing to sell them the machines when they heard Morris Group's name. Doug Rice and the other employees were on the verge of tears. They are clearly targeting our company. What should we do now? Boss required us to begin the production in these few days. The Northampton Chamber of Commerce will know of our intention once we drag this any longer. Iris was anxious. It will be too slow for us to acquire the equipment from other places. The transport will be a huge problem we have to address due to the possibility of others sabotaging the machines en route to the factory. Doug asked, should we discuss this matter with Wilder? Prosser again? The additional cost doesn't matter. Acquiring. The equipment is our top priority now. Iris rubbed her temples. Let me think of another way. 
At the same time, in Bale Group, one of the companies under the Northampton Chamber of Commerce, Ron Bale, Wilden Signs, and others gathered together. Ha ha ha! Let me see how you are going to resolve this now. Morris Group. Ron smiled wickedly. Wilden was delighted as well. I told my friend, Doug, to request FVE billion from them. Zari Yount asked the question in his mind, what if Morris Group is willing to pay the sum? The Protector Chapter 253 Braylon Stewart responded cheerfully. Then we'll let Doug provide them with the equipment. But we will create some trouble during the transportation to destroy the machines. Ha ha ha. How much loss will Morris Group suffer by that? Time. The few cunning men were overjoyed. Another day passed, and Iris failed to come up with any new idea. She wanted to resolve the issue on her own because she was desperate to prove her capabilities to her mysterious boss. In the end, Iris contacted Wilder Prosser. Ha ha ha, I was wondering who called. Didn't I tell you that? You'll regret your decision? So, what's up? Wilder said. Smugly. Morris Group is FLLED with useless and incompetent. Workers. They have to beg me, after all. Iris cut to the chase. Mr. Prosser, I can pay you an additional. One and a half billion at most. You're decreasing my asking price from FVE billion to one end. A half billion? Ha ha. I have to say, you're good at negotiating. I'll have to host a meeting to discuss this matter. Wilder did. Not reject her immediately. After he hung up on Iris's call, Wilder contacted Wilden Signs. And the others through a video call. What should I do now? Morris Group offered to pay one and a half billion instead. He. Asked. After a brief discussion among the four people, Wilden answered with a smile, sell the equipment to them, Wilder. We will cause some trouble during the transportation. Those machines will never reach Morris Group. Wilder was excited. Doesn't that mean I made a billion and a half for nothing? Ha <laughs> ha. Exactly. Wait for another day before you get back to her, Wilder. Wilden suggested. All right. Got it. Inside Morris Group. Iris and the other executives were anxiously waiting for Wilder. Prosser's reply. Isaiah reported to Levi at once after he was informed of the situation. Levi was surprised after listening to him. I expected us to stumble into such a predicament if we purchase the equipment. In Northampton. That's why I asked Iris to order the machines at South City. I did not anticipate this problem to arise. Northampton Chamber of Commerce's extensive influence piqued Levi's interest. It's not fun to target them if they do not provide me with any challenge. All right. I'll handle this, Isaiah. Levi dialed another number. I need some equipment to arrive. At my place by tomorrow. Consider it done, sir. The person on the other end of the phone answered. Inside Morris Group, Isaiah informed everyone that their boss had dealt with the issue regarding the procurement of the equipment. What? We can receive the equipment by tomorrow. Iris was beyond excited. That's right. Isaiah nodded. Iris looked at Isaiah in envy. He's able to interact with the mysterious boss directly. Iris asked curiously. Mr. Wade, what kind of a person is our boss? He's a great person and the man I admire the most in my life. Isaiah responded. Elena agreed as well. That's right. Our boss is also my idol. Iris's curiosity intensified after receiving their answers. I must pursue him. Wilder Prosser contacted Iris the next day at 9 o'clock in the morning. 
What's the matter, Mr. Prosser? Wilder said, Our company has decided to sell the equipment. To you for one and a half billion, Ms. Annabelle. We will send the equipment to you by today once you pay the amount. You are free to arrange your own transportation if you are worried. In Wilder's opinion, Morris Group would definitely agree to his proposal because they were desperate. Oh, you're calling because of the equipment. That's not needed anymore. We've acquired what we needed. The Protector Chapter 254 What? Wilder was taken aback. They've acquired the equipment? How is that possible? The Northampton Chamber of Commerce had prohibited every medical equipment company from dealing with Morris Group. So how could they've possibly lay their hands on the machines? Are you sure, Ms. Annabelle? Wilder questioned her with uncertainty. That's right. They are much more efficient. We will receive the equipment by 12 o'clock in the afternoon today. Iris replied to him. Ah? Where did you purchase the equipment? That's none of your concern. This is our company's matter. Goodbye. Wilder Prosser slumped in his seat, disheartened. There goes. My wonderful dream of earning one and a half billion. Effortlessly. He hurriedly reported the unexpected turn of events to Wilden. Signs and the others. The few councils of the Northampton Chamber of Commerce. Were astounded as well. They've procured the equipment. All four men utilized their connections at once to investigate the matter. What they found was that none of the medical equipment companies in Northampton and surrounding cities had sold any machine to Morris Group. Where did they source out the equipment then? The most important thing to do now is to figure out the transportation route of the equipment. We need to stop them. Immediately. They were in a state of agitation. Meanwhile, Levi was hanging out with Azure Dragon and the others. Levi received a phone call from Kyrie Duncan, the head of the logistics department in the Northampton War Zone, at that moment. The medical equipment you purchased from Northampton War Zone's Defense Research and Development Center is being transported now, sir. As you ordered, we've arranged a fully armed squadron to escort the logistic team. Kyrie reported. No one expected Levi to procure the equipment from the War Zone's Defense Research and Development Center. Levi nodded. Okay. Thank you. This set of equipment is bought under Morris Group's name, Mr. Duncan. I've transferred the payment. Please check. Understood, sir. Levi reminded after hanging up the phone call. Kieran, tell Iris and the others to wait for the equipment at the factory. They machines will arrive in two hours. Then he looked at Azure Dragon. Spread the information on the transportation route, Azure Dragon. Inside Bale Group. We've identified the transportation route. There's still one end. A half hour for us to stop them. Ron Bale glanced at his watch. Worriedly. Braylon Stewart said through gritted teeth, Should I contact? Phantasma? We'll let him handle this. Okay. Make sure Phantasma destroys those machines. There. Eyes gleamed with malicious intent. Phantasma was one of the Mafa bosses in Northampton. He ran a credit company, with most of his employees being thugs. He was a ruthless man who would not hesitate to kill another person. Phantasma often did the Northampton Chamber of Commerce's biddings. It was a common thing for him to cripple others while dealing with those matters. We can rest assured if Phantasma handles this task. He's cruel and meticulous. What he does will never be traced. Back to us even if he murders someone. On a secluded highway in Northampton. 
a bunch of vicious-looking men placed plenty of nails on the road and parked multiple cars to block the path. A long-haired man dressed in a black outfit was seated inside an SUV parked aside. His fingers were covered with rings as he pew fed on a cigar. If one were to look closely, a pupil was missing from one of his eyes, so his appearance was indeed frightening like a ghost. The man was none other than the infamous Phantasma. Stay vigilant and work smart later on. They reminded us to cripple a few people as a warning to Morris Group. Phantasma's hoarse voice was capable of sending chills down others' spines. The Protector Chapter 255 Don't worry, boss. Phantasma's subordinates rubbed their palms together in excitement. Strapped around their waists were various sharp blades. The logistic team finally arrived after a short while. The logistic team was made up of 30 cars because the machines were worth up to FV 100 million, after all. The car leading the team came to an abrupt halt upon noticing the row of cars messily parked in the middle of the road. The rest of the cars stopped as well. Doug Rice was seated inside the car leading the team. He was about to get out of the car and check out the situation. When he saw over a dozen menacing-looking men advancing in his direction, Doug was scared out of his wits. Phantasma and his underlings walked up to the car and he knocked on the car window. Doug was fearful as he looked at the batons in their hands. He immediately lowered the car window. Phantasma croaked. Are you from Morris Group? Yes. That. That's right, Doug nodded. Okay. You may leave now, but those machines will have to. Stay. Phantasma ordered. I can't do that. We can't leave without the equipment, Doug. Said. The rest of his sentence was stuck in his throat as. Phantasma's subordinates glared at him. Doug immediately contacted Iris and informed him of the. Predicament. Iris and the others were worried sick. But Elena was unusually calm. There's no need to worry. Boss. Has arranged everything. All we have to do is wait here. Patiently. Phantasma led his men toward the back of the convoy. Afterward. Although the war zone defense research and development. Center produced the equipment, the logistic team was not. Provided by the army. Instead, it was Doug Rice who had hired. The logistic team. Phantasma and his men would have fed in fright if they saw. That it was a feat of military vehicles. All the carriages attached to the cars were covered by black drapes. Phantasma and his men removed the black drapes and sized up the equipment underneath. They smiled wickedly when they have ascertained all 30 cars to be loaded with the medical equipment. Phantasma contacted Ron. Mr. Bale, I've checked all 30 cars, and all of them are carrying the equipment. Excellent. Destroy all the machines, Phantasma. Morris Group. Can dream about laying their hands on the equipment. Ron. Said coldly. Okay. I will check the rest of the cars and destroy everything. I'll also cripple a few men afterward. Phantasma continued to. Examine the remaining vehicles. The rest of the cars were loaded with accessories and spare. Parts of the machines. In the end, there were only three cars left to check. Phantasma felt panic rising within him at the sight of the last. Three cars. For some unknown reason, his left eyelid was. Twitching continuously. With an apprehensive heart, Phantasma walked up to the cars. He used his baton to part the drapes. The interior of the car was dark, but he could make out a group. Of people inside. One of Phantasma's subordinates exclaimed, There are so many people inside. Another man added, These must be the workers to unload the equipment. Phantasma ordered harshly, All of you, get out of the car. Someone come and part the drapes. 
two of his underlings parted the drapes. Sunlight illuminated. The dark interior at once. Everyone was frightened when they saw the people sitting. Inside the car. Phantasma and his men dropped their batons unwittingly. They. Cigarettes held between their lips fell as their jaws dropped. Inside the car were over a dozen men dressed in military. Out -fs. They were pointing their loaded guns at Phantasma and his subordinates. No one expected to see a group of fully armed soldiers inside the car. Did you just order us to get out of the car? The company. Commander leading the group pressed his pistol against Phantasma's head. The Protector Chapter 256 Swish Everyone got out of the car. The rest of the soldiers in the other two cars got out as well. Over a hundred armed soldiers surrounded Phantasma and his men while pointing their guns at them. Phantasma and his subordinates were scared out of their wits. They were so close to losing bladder control. The unexpected turn of events was completely unimaginable to Phantasma and the others. Phantasma and his gang dropped their batons. Some even succumbed to the heavy atmosphere as they slumped onto the ground. Phantasma, with the gun pressed up against his head, was trembling fearfully. He raised his hands and shouted. This is a misunderstanding. This is all just a misunderstanding. The company commander said with a stern voice, I am the Northampton War Zone Defense Research and Development. Center 8th Platoon Company Commander, Boris Dia, tasked to escort the medical equipment from the war zone to Morris. Group. Who are you? Phantasma nearly passed out after listening to his introduction. His subordinates were worse. Some had already fainted on the ground. Most of them had already collapsed on the ground in fear. They finally knew where Morris Group sourced out the Equipment. They purchased from the War Zone Defense Research and Development Center. No wonder there is a platoon of soldiers escorting them. Damn it. I regret taking up this job. I wouldn't have the guts to even come here if I knew where this equipment came from. Ron Bale and his crappy friends scammed me. Phantasma was on the verge of tears. Why didn't you load these items into military vehicles? We would have fed immediately if that was the case. Arrest them. Boris commanded. Phantasma and his men were detained. They were aware of the implications following their arrests. Our lives are ruined. Completely ruined. But we must not expose our employer. Otherwise, even our family members will face trouble. In the end, all the equipment arrived safely at Morris Group's pharmaceutical factory. The machines were finally installed after half a day's work. The materials procured by Iris had reached too. They could begin their production starting that night. Isaiah monitored the whole process as the technical advisor. Levi tagged along with Isaiah to survey the factory. Iris was surprised to see Levi. Why are you here? Why can't I be here? Levi answered with a question of his own. Isaiah smiled awkwardly. Ms. Annabelle, Mr. G.A. He followed. Me here. Clarity washed over Iris. Oh, I understand now. No wonder. Zoe said you found a job. Did Mr. Wade offer you a position? Because you are acquainted with him for so long. Levi beamed at her. So what if that's the case? Fine. I'll allow you to stay in Morris Group as one of the technical advisors for Zoe's sake. But I am your superior from now on. You have to address me as Ms. Annabelle whenever you see me. Iris said proudly. Iris had always been a competitive person. She felt excited as she thought to herself. I swore to myself six years ago that I will surpass Levi Garrison when he established Levi Group. So I 
went abroad to further my career. I can't help but feel a sense of achievement now that he's my subordinate. However, she failed to notice the odd expression on Isaiah and Elena's faces. The person in charge of the pharmaceutical factory, Luca Parker, reported, We've calibrated all the equipment, M.S. Annabelle. We can start our production tonight. Great. Ask everyone to be on standby. We will begin. Production at 8 o'clock tonight. Iris lamented after she was done with the arrangements, R. Boss is too mysterious, isn't he? That's right. So is Mr. Atkinson. Both of them are often. Missing. Doug and the others added. The Protector Chapter 257 Elena and Isaiah exchanged glances. They are indeed. Mysterious. All of you don't even recognize him when he's. Standing right before your eyes. Iris said in front of everyone, our boss is amazing. He's. Capable of purchasing the equipment from the war zone. Defense Research and Development Center. My admiration for. Him grows more by the day. Ms. Annabelle, since you're still single, you should consider. Pursuing the boss if he's single too. Doug and the others. Teased her. Iris nodded brazenly. I will definitely pursue him if he's single. I. Will become your lady boss in the future. Iris had grown accustomed to the culture abroad. She did not. Shy away from expressing her thoughts. Levi frowned upon hearing her words. She's hopeless for. Harboring an interest in her best friend's husband. Morris Group's procurement spread like wild FRE among North. Hampton's business world. Countless were shocked to their cores, including the wealthiest. Man in Northampton, Winston Gonzalez. Morris Group sure. Has the guts and capabilities to purchase the equipment under. The chamber's supervision. The harsh reality hit the members of the Northampton. Chamber of Commerce harder than anyone else. Ron Bale and the other councils of the chamber were losing. Their minds. They were overwhelmed by a sense of defeat after failing twice. Consecutively, in addition to Phantasma's arrest. Our. Reputation will be dragged through the mud if the four noble. Families hear about this. Shall we cease all actions and assess their intention for now? Ron and the others decided to stop targeting Morris Group. Temporarily. Morris Group increased the rate of their production in secret in. The last few days. Levi could finally enter Morris Group freely after Iris appointed. Him as one of the technical advisors. There are not many. People who know my identity anyway. Nevertheless. Levi appeared to laze around most of the time in the outsider's eyes. They would always see him drinking Kofi and puffing on his cigarette while waiting to get of work. Even Iris was barely suppressing her urge to rebuke Levi's attitude. However, none of them knew Levi was the one actually making all the most important decisions in the company. One day, Azure Dragon and Kieran arrived at Levi's office while he was sipping on his tea. I have something to tell you, sir. They recently appointed someone to FLL in the position of Commander-in-Chief in the Northampton War Zone. They will be hosting an appointment ceremony. The Vice Commander-in-Chief, Xander Hoyles, would like to invite you to attend the ceremony. Azure Dragon said. Levi smiled. Do I have to go? Kieran answered, under normal circumstances, you do not have to attend. But the newly appointed commander-in-chief is someone you're acquainted with. He's even one of your subordinates. Levi pondered briefly. Then he said, could the person you're talking about be the Iron Brigade's FRST platoon commander-in-chief, Percy Covington? Percy Covington is a brilliant soldier. But he retired from the front line after suffering an injury. He's been recuperating in the last two years. 
He's my only subordinate who I think qualifies for the commander in chief position. Kieran nodded. Yes. That's right. That person is Percy. Covington. All right. Inform the Northampton War Zone that I will be attending the commander in chief's appointment ceremony. I must witness my subordinate's moment of glory. Levi ordered. Understood, sir. All the soldiers in the Northampton war zone were exhilarated. When they received the news of Levi's participation, especially Xander Hoyles, he was beyond excited. I was worried he would not come previously. Now I can finally rest assured. Xander Hoyles deliberately informed members of the four noble families, who were in control of the Northampton Chamber of Commerce, Eric Robinson, Wallace Henderson, and the others. Eric Robinson and his friends were so enlivened they nearly forgot about the matters related to Morris Group. These matters are insignificant when compared to this ground. Shattering news. Has the most glorious moment of our lives arrived? We can finally meet with the protector of Arudaya, the god of war, in person. I can finally die in peace after having this opportunity to meet with the god of war. The protector chapter 258. We can even disregard Winston Gonzalez if we become acquainted with the god of war. That's right. How many years have we live under Winston? Gonzalez's oppression. Eric and his gang could not forget about their dispute with Winston Gonzalez after all those years. They wanted to utilize the opportunity to target him. Winston. Gonzalez has been restricting the Northampton Chamber of Commerce from expanding our authority. We will have to eliminate him if we wish to bring the chamber to the next level. So this Commander-in-Chief's appointment Ceremony is a once-in-a-lifetime opportunity because only the God of War can overrule Winston Gonzalez. The Northampton Chamber of Commerce decided to postpone all of its plans to prioritize the appointment ceremony. They could not care less about Morris Group's progress at that moment. Meanwhile, at the largest and most luxurious villa in North Hampton, Every member of the Gonzalez family had gathered. Winston Gonzalez was seated on an elevated platform in an imposing manner. His sons and daughters were seated before him, while his grandchildren stood at the back of the room. Winston Gonzalez had built his empire from scratch, attaining the title of the richest man in Northampton with his own F. Fort. His descendants did not bring shame to the family as they were all outstanding and extraordinary people. Their talents bloomed in multiple fields, including the business, military, and political circles. That was the reason behind the Gonzalez family's steadfast power. They were powerful not only because of their wealth but also because of their connections in every field that are comparable to the Northampton Chamber of Commerce. The Gonzalez family outshone the chamber because they were tied together by a familial bond. For example, Winston Gonzalez's eldest son, Andy Gonzalez. He was the youngest chief of staff in the war zone. Andy said with a smile, I have good news to tell you, father. Oh? Do enlighten me. Winston Gonzalez's well-being had improved significantly. Lately. My war zone's commander-in-chief position has been vacated. For quite some time. They recently appointed someone to FLL in. The position. That man was a member of the Iron Brigade. The news piqued Winstone's interest at once. Oh? That's. Great news. Most importantly, the God of War will be attending the. Commander-in-chief's appointment ceremony. He did not want to attend initially, but he changed his mind after knowing his subordinate was the man selected to hold the position. Andy elaborated. Ah! The god of war? He will be attending. Winston was 
invigorated instantaneously. That's right. Moreover, the ceremony will have slots open to members of the society, and you are one of them. Andy said. That means I can finally meet with the god of war. Winston's voice trembled agitatedly. He had always admired the god of war. The aged man even went to the airport to welcome the god of war when he received news of his arrival at Northampton. But alas, he was forced to return when a gun was pointed at his head. He sent out multiple invitations to the god of war afterward but was rejected too. Yes. That's right. You can even interact with him face to face. Andy answered. He was in charge of the appointment ceremony, including the attendees' quota. He was also responsible in arranging the FAO of the event. So. He knew there would be an interaction session after the ceremony. Oh my god. I can even talk to him? This is so exciting. Winston stood up excitedly. Even Una and the other younger members of the family were eyeing Andy with anticipation. Are we allowed to attend too? Uncle. They were eager to meet with the legendary god of war as well. It's difficult, but I'll see what I can do. This is definitely a worthy experience for all of you to meet with the god of war. Andy said. That's right. I heard that the god of war is about the same age as Una and the others. He's a very impressive man. Winston said cheerfully. The news of the commander-in-chief's appointment ceremony spread within Northampton's community. It was a golden opportunity for the public to meet with the god of war. Some were even willing to pay millions to participate in the event. The Protector Chapter 259 Morris Group achieved great progress in that period of time. They had successfully produced the FRST batch of products and sent the finished products for quality control tests by the Quality Supervision Bureau. They could market their products once they received the Bureau's approval. Everyone could not wait to witness the impactful effect their products would create in the market. They expected the North. Hampton Chamber of Commerce to be taken by surprise by that time. However, the few council members of the chamber kept themselves updated with news related to that matter. Ron even invited Tom, Charlie and Sasha to join in on their discussion. I want to ask your opinion on this matter. Why do you think? Morris Group hired Isaiah Wade. Ron and the other council. Members were confused by Morris Group's intention, so they sought out the newcomer's thoughts. Mr. Bale, frankly speaking, Isaiah is indeed a competent person. Perhaps Morris Group is trying to explore the medical technology market. Isaiah is a suitable candidate if that's the case. Tom explained. Is there any possibility that Isaiah possesses all the Information on the core technology. That was Ron and the other council members' primary concern. That's not possible. Back then, Levi Garrison handed on at heard of the information to each of us to keep the balance. No. One, not even Levi, is in possession of all the information. Unless the three of us get together. Charlie said FRMLY. The other two nodded in agreement. Haha, <laughs> that means the Northampton Chamber of Commerce is the only party who knows all about the core technology. Ron laughed. Yes. That's right. The trio nodded again. But Morris Group has been acting mysteriously lately. I don't know what they are doing. I've arranged my men to investigate. But nothing came up, Ron sighed. You should have asked for my assistance. Mr. Bale. Sasha. Grinned wickedly at him. You. That's right. I can meet up with Isaiah. That cripple will listen. To me. Even though I had a fallout with him, I am certain that. He will inform me of everything if I fatter him a little. 
After all, I was the one who tricked him into telling me the last part of the information related to the core technology. Okay. Then I will let you handle this matter. If you can obtain CLAS SIFT information about Morris Group this time, I will let UFLL in the Vice Director's position in my company's PR department. Don't worry. I'll show you my capabilities, Mr. Bale. Sasha was excited. That's an executive level position in Bale. Group. I can finally become an official elite member of society. Malicious intent glinted in Sasha's eyes after she exited Bale. Group's building. Do you think you are going to prosper in? Morris Group, Isaiah Wade? Well, don't you worry. I will report. Your wrongdoing to Morris Group for disclosing CLAS SIFT. Information after I trick you into telling me everything. I can. Guarantee your reputation will be ruined by that time. No. Company in the entire Northampton will want to hire you in. The future. They wanted to drive Isaiah to his death. Meanwhile, Isaiah had been working hard in the factories. Frontline all this while. He could finally breathe a sigh of relief after the finished. Products were sent for QC tests. They subjected their products to two kinds of QC tests. One batch of the products were sent to the Quality Supervision Bureau, while another batch was sent to the War Zone Defense Research and Development Center. Isaiah was CONF dent in the quality of the products. Levi found him just as he was about to work on refining the next product. Did you know why I forbade you from getting a divorce back? Then, Levi asked all of a sudden. Isaiah scratched and shook his head. We will be letting them of too easy if you divorce her just like that. Levi smiled. Mr. Garrison, you're saying, Isaiah did not understand. Levi's intention. Let's go. Come with me to a place. Levi said. Okay. I'll listen to you, Mr. Garrison. Isaiah tagged along. The two of them got into a car and went all the way to the suburbs. They finally arrived at their destination after two hours. Isaiah was turry fed and dumbfounded as he looked at the buildings before his eyes. The Protector Chapter 260 The building in question was none other than the North Hampton War Zone Defense Research and Development Center. The head of the logistic department, Kyrie Duncan, welcomed Levi and Isaiah in person. There's no need to raise a commotion. We are only here for a visit. Levi said in a diminished tone. Kyrie nodded. Then he led Levi into the Defense Research and Development Center facilities. Isaiah was amazed. They went straight toward the Quality Control Department. Kyrie introduced Isaiah to his colleagues, this is the main designer in producing this batch of products by Morris Group. Kyrie's colleagues stared at Isaiah in surprise. You're so impressive. We've tested the quality of your products, and they're even better than the marketed products. By the Northampton Chamber of Commerce. This medical equipment will create a significant impact if it's introduced into the market. This will definitely beneft the public. Turns out the Defense Research and Development Center had completed the quality control tests and they were in awe by the designer's prowess. Levi brought Isaiah to interact with the technicians because he had an idea. Levi said to Kyrie, I think Isaiah is a suitable candidate to become the Defense Research and Development Center's Technical Advisor in Medical Equipment. What's your opinion on this suggestion? Kyrie beamed at once. That's great. We do need more talents. In this field, our country's advancement in medical technology is lagging compared to other nations. We will certainly flourish. Better with the addition of talents like Mr. Wade. All right. Then you will make the necessary arrangement. Also, 
provide him with a military rank. Levi ordered. Okay. No problem. I will handle this immediately. Kyrie was done with all the arrangements in less than half an hour. Isaiah looked at the identifications and the set of military outfit. In a daze. Feeling perplexed, he asked Levi. Mr. Garrison, does this mean I am considered as a soldier now? That's right. You are now the technical advisor here. But you will have to work harder in the future because you will need to visit this place and guide them too. I will not disappoint you. Isaiah saluted Levi in a less professional manner. He grasped the identification and regarded Levi with touching emotions in his heart. He is the man who provided me a second chance in life. Remember this. Put your knowledge to proper use. Serve the public and bring honor to our nation. Levi patted his shoulder. After Isaiah got of work in the night, Sasha called him. Unexpectedly. Can you spare some time to meet with me, Isaiah? I have. Something important to talk to you about. Let's meet at eight. O'clock tonight at Silver Cross. Isaiah's heart softened, listening to Sasha. She's the woman I loved for over ten years, after all. Even her voice can easily sway my heart. But Isaiah was sensible enough to seek Levi's opinion on whether he should accept Sasha's invitation. Of course. You must go. I'll accompany you. Levi responded. In the end, Levi tagged along with Isaiah to Silver Cross. Levi attached a spy camera on Isaiah and placed a recorder in his hand before entering the building. She's committing extramarital affairs. So we have to start gathering evidence. Do you know what I mean? Levi asked. Understood. Isaiah grasped the recorder in his hand. I swear. To make that shameless couple pay for what they did. Levi beamed at him. Moreover, you're the technical advisor at the Warzone Defense Research and Development Center. That means you're a soldier and her unfaithful act has disrupted a soldier's marriage. This offense can place them behind bars for the rest of their lives. Not to mention the other crimes they've committed, such as disclosing CLAS SIFT information, business fraud, and many more. They will suffer terribly once we collect sufficient evidence against them. Boom. Isaiah was stunned. 